Hey, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's a fine, fine Tuesday here in Florida. My guest is, is from or in Florida right now as well, too. So we've, uh, we're going to have a fun show for, for you tonight. Uh, many of you have seen this gentleman's calf gallery for a while under the name Wolvie Fan. And uh, Wolvie Fan Rob is my guest tonight. So we're going to learn a little bit about his uh, collection and his time in the hobby, which is uh, a very long story that uh, he's, you know, he's been in the hobby for quite some time. But let me, let me bring Rob into the, the show and we'll get started with this interview. Hey Rob, that that is a very impressive wall that you've got there, and uh, Wolverine's front and center there. I love it. What's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well, Rob. So you know, I forget what part of Florida are you in? Palm Beach Gardens. Uh, I want to warn everybody. I've never done a Zoom. I've never done a you know any of this crap on uh, the computer. So you know, cut me a uh, slack if I mess up. Oh, they, they are. They are a very forgiving bunch in the audience. I can assure you of that. <laughs> um, but uh, that's right. And you're, you have a family in Orlando as well. So kind of close to where I'm at. And uh, no, this is cool. I'm glad I, I got to meet all the uh, the natives and, you know, the Florida natives here because, you know, we want to I want to start having guests over and meeting uh, meeting people trying to set up some stuff. You got oh, you drink Guinness. Well, then we're friends already, Rob, because uh, I, I'm definitely a porter and stout guy. It's all I drink, my friend. <laughs> Guinness. <laughs> oh man, see, I always wait till after the show. I've got to work this out. I've got, <laughs> these are the rules that I, uh, you know, put on myself so that I don't uh, mess up my interviews. But, um, but yeah, no. More, my wife bought me some. I think a stout uh, that I've, I'm going to have uh, a try. For. It was like a local thing out of Florida. I'm not quite sure where, but uh, I don't get the drink till afterwards. So uh, you have a lot of art on your walls, Rob. Very, uh, you know, I'm yes. impressed everybody's been complaining since I moved here that I haven't hung a thing, but it looks like you've been, you've been working steadily at the, this, this layout you got here. You, you don't, there's not a, there's not many square inches left between the artwork. So that's, uh, that's impressive. Do you, do you frame everything that you buy or what's your, uh, what's your approach to that? So <laughs> I've been buying art since the early nineties and I've been framing it since then. And uh, I only framed probably the best pieces I have in my opinion, you know, the stuff that goes on the wall, I, don't generally want to sell uh, every once in a while I will but uh, I got maybe in the house upstairs and downstairs I got about 100 120 pieces uh, hanging and then I got a couple hundred panel pages that I just had in the, the portfolios but I don't really hang any of that I just hang covers or big huge double page triple page flashes so you go for the uh, the you know the, the bigger shots whether it's a cover or it's splash uh, you, yes. you, you probably own some interior pages, but those are the ones that you don't typically choose to frame. No, I got some nice ones. I got some great, great, uh, you know, I got some Infinity Gauntlet pages. I got some, uh, a bunch of Wolverine pages. I got uh, some Killer Joe Mad pages. I just, I don't really hang them. I don't know. I, I, I like hanging, like I guess Marcus White would say. I like big art and I cannot lie. <laughs> yeah, Marcus, Marcus says that, I think. And so does Anthony Snyder. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of us who enjoy... The <laughs> larger art. Um, who else? So, so let's see. So yeah, Dino says you should film a few uh, a calf cribs one day where you're showing off the art on your walls. I mean, it's it's impressive, definitely impressive. I'm in. I'll do it. All right, there, it's not hard. It's uh, it, we it's just it, we use it as a fun uh, fun way to kind of show off how other collectors show off, the, you know, the way they present their artwork at home. I mean, uh, not everybody you know likes to do it. I I can't do it yet, but uh, but you, since you've been at it for for thirty years, have you have you been in the same? How long you've been in the house that you're in right now? I'm just curious how you know how long has this display been up there? Ah, that's a good one. I didn't expect that one. I, I've been here since two thousand and two. Uh, I started in Jersey, um, and I had some art hanging in Jersey, but I had a real small house. I uh, my comic book store was in Miami during the college days, which I really didn't do well in college. I just had my store and uh, in my shitty little apartment, I would hang art there. And I think I sent you a couple pics where I have art hanging in the comic book store. So like I said, I've always been hanging art. I love hanging the art. I was framing professionally. I, uh, you know, I get the right glass, all that stuff. And uh, so far, so good. Yeah, well, that's 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 pretty cool. So, well, we should let's because I want to get to the whole comic shop because I didn't really realize, you know, what what the time period was. But so we always start these things off with your origin story. I mean, kind of give me your background on, you know, how you got interested in comics and how uh, co comics can, you know, kind of turned you into an art collector as well. Like everybody else, comic books. Uh, in the 80s, I was a kid 
And I know I look old with all the grief, but I'm not even 50 yet. Okay, Jerry, call us before you start with the comments. <laughs> no. Uh, so back in the 80s, I was reading comics to everyone else. I actually, it's funny because the first comic book I ever picked up, I was in the, air, uh, the airport and my mom said, hey, pick something to read. And back in the day, they would have three and four packs at the, uh, the little shops. And I picked up, what a lucky pickup. I picked up uh, the four pack of Frank Miller's Wolverine miniseries. And I read that and I was hooked, not just to Wolverine, but to, you know, to, to all comics. I mean, uh, DC, Marvel, uh, I love reading Aquaman crazy, believe it or not. So it started then, back in the uh, 80s. I was just reading comics, been a huge toy collector. I have a ton of Migos, you know, so uh, that also fueled my collection. And uh, I really didn't know about art until the early 90s, you know, when I walked into one of uh, the big conventions. Back in the day, it was Fred Greenberg conventions. He used to have the Great Eastern Convention up in uh, New York at the Penta or the Park Plaza, one of those. You know, he was a bit of a hippie. He was a cool dude. And uh, that's where I really had my first experience into art because she started seeing out there a lot of the art and people, uh, a lot of the um, a lot of the artists selling it. So and back then, they didn't have dealers selling it for them. They were just selling it off their own table. Um, so that's that's pretty much how I got into it. So what was your first artwork that you picked up? Do you remember? It's, it's a great story, and I kick myself in the ass because I don't have it anymore. But you can find it on TAF. It's on there. It was back in Grayston Convention. It was probably 91, 92. That's, that's where everything started for me. And, you know, I was a punk kid, probably 17 years old, 18 years old, and I had some cash in my pocket because I was doing the show. I was selling some comics. And I said, damn it, you know, that looks so cool, the original art. Let me get a piece. So I woke up to homage studios tables that was jim lee stuff yeah and there's brandon Choi sitting there with all this freaking art tons of x-men shit there's tons and i'm going through it now i like jim lee a lot but i love mcfarlane i love biz i don't know why jim lee's never been you know i'm probably gonna piss off jason the ambrosio but i've never been a huge jim lee fan i like his art you know and and, and i can appreciate it because it's one of the best so i'm going through and i find the first page of X-Men 4 with Omega Red coming out of the guy, that, that, that swampy, murky shit. Oh, yeah, I know that. I know the picture. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> yeah. One of your guys has it on uh, on cap. Mm -hmm. 380 bucks. 380 bucks. I was like, wow, I'm buying it. You know, I probably had twelve, thirteen hundred $1,300 in the pocket from the show. So I bought that plus a few other things. But that was the actual first piece of comic card I had in my hand that I bought. I sold it probably Dang. six months later. But <laughs> I don't have that anymore. Well, that's too bad, but, uh, you know, but after, so, I mean, were you hooked at that moment or was it really just kind of a thrill buy and you, you know, you waited another year or two before you bought again, or were you, were you kind of hooked at that? Oh, moment? well, I, when I got that page, I started getting really hungry for buying art. I, I bought so much small little stuff. I used to buy commissions. I never, I don't do that now, but I used to just buy the, you know, stuff that I could afford small pages. It was cheap back then. What really got me into the art, I would tell you is. Back in the early 90s, there was a guy, his name was Bill Matern, and he used to do uh, a show, the Miami Comic Con in, in Miami. It was a great show, and, you know, he was a hustler. He'd get great guys out there. He had Keon, Tex, Harv, Javier Sotaris. He had Bart Sears. He, he would get a great show, and he promoted it. And that's when I think I really, really got into the art because they would come, and they would be doing sketches, and a lot of guys would be buying sketches. And um, I got a book. You know those, those books that people do commissions in? I got one of those sure. books. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget, Brett Levins was at the show and had him take my cover. Brett Levins did the cover. So that's where it really clicked for me. I started, I filled that book. Unfortunately, the book got stolen from me. But, you know, I, I filled that book with so many guys. And that's where it really clicked. I didn't buy many pages. I was just doing a lot of commissions. And uh, as I got older, I made a little bit more money. That's where I started buying more pages but that's when it really really clicked the original art was getting those uh but that's too bad so what how did uh, the book get stolen from you was it at a at a show or yeah at again it was at uh it was a great eastern convention i had a couple of tables i had a bunch of comics out and i had my book and i was showing it to somebody and i was going to get a couple of drawings done in one minute it's there next minute it's gone and i had some great stuff in there man i got some great pics in there from guys great art you know um Again, from the early 90s, I had a great Keown piece. I had this gorgeous Harv recreation of the first of uh, Ghost Rider 1 cover. Uh, Tex did a double splash of, of um, 
of Ghost Rider on his motorcycle. And let me tell you, that's a funny story because he he was so busy at the show in Miami, he never had a chance to do my uh, my my art. So he kept promising me and kept promising me he'd do it. He needed a ride to the airport. This is how I got a friendship with him. I mean, I'm not friends with him anymore, but back in the 90s, I, I was. Yeah. Uh, he takes, I take him to the airport and he goes, Rob, I owe you. Let me get your text. Let me get your 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 picture, your 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 uh, commission now. I said, all right, cool. Let's do it. He goes, I want to do a nice wash for you. You know, let's uh let's get some water so I can do a gorgeous wash. And I was like, all right. So I get a little cup of water, we're drinking coronas, and he starts doing the damn wash in corona. He was he was <laughs> doing the wash in corona. So I had a freaking corona ghost rider. It was it was awesome. And then the book smelled like corona. It was awesome. It was it was uh that's by far one of my favorite ones. I've never heard that before. But uh, Tex yeah. is a pretty funny guy. I can, I can see him doing that. And it probably turned out fantastic. <laughs> he's, he's super cool. Back in the 90s, we hung out a couple times. We, you know, I met him at, uh, at, 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 uh, at Midtown back in the day when they didn't have all the Broadway. It was a little bit seedier. So, you know, we got a little bit of trouble over there. You know, uh, I actually went to his house on a couple occasions for a New Year's party. We, we, uh, we had fun. He was a super, super, super down-to-earth guy. And the few relationships I made with the artists was all from this Miami convention because the promoter, he was old school religion and his wife would let him go out. And these guys are young. They're all rock stars back in the day and they wanted to go to a bar. They wanted to go do things. So he couldn't take them. So he, uh, he commissioned me to take these guys out. So I, I got to have, uh, you know, a few cool stories with a lot of the guys. It was, it was pretty fun. So you're basically paid to take them out to, uh, to have, have a good time or, or were you not paid or you, you were just happy to be doing it? I was happy doing it, but I'm no idiot. You know, uh, I made sure Bill right. gave me uh, some cash to go pay. Right, for he it. should give you some money for sure. Yeah, I was 18, 19 years old. I mean, I had a store, but I didn't make much money. So, yeah. So, you know, we've kind of skipped over the store part. How did you, I mean, you're 18, 19 and you have a store. How did how did you even decide to do that? I mean, uh, to me, you know, growing up, I mean, I would have loved to have had a comic shop or an arcade, you know, because I'm a few years older than you. I'm 54. So, you know, I'm from that, from that era, but those are the things that we all would have loved to have had. And you, you got to have one and you were still a teenager, basically. I mean, how, do, how does that happen? Well, I, uh, I used to do a lot of the small local shows in Jersey. They used to have a little, uh, in Wayne, New Jersey, they had a couple of shows. So I would, you know, 16, 17 years old, I would take my long box and I would sell some stuff, trade some stuff. When I moved to Miami, you know, to go to college, which I really didn't go, but I, you know, I still moved to Miami because my mom lived down there. I would do those. There was a couple of shows I'd go to Fort Lauderdale for. I'd go to West Palm, you know, Miami. There weren't many until this guy I did one. And uh, Bill McTurn, I'm talking about. So I, I just accumulated our uh, comic books and, and, and toys, and it just got bigger and bigger. And one day I said, you know what? I have some money saved. Let me see how much it costs to get a store. And nobody wanted me to, no one wanted me to, to no one wanted to sign a lease with me because I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I finally met a guy. He was really cool, younger. He was, yeah. The space. I was right next to a movie theater, right across the street from FIU uh, in 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 Miami, and uh, the rest was history. We were, my brother would work for me, and we called the store Brothers Grimm Comics and Cards. So, any of you guys that came to the store, shout out. <laughs> well, you did give me uh, oh, some shit. photos from this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it sounds That's, like you had a good uh, location. You're next to the movie theater and and a uh, college campus. So I mean, yes, it was a good good location. Yeah, it was awesome. That's a great thing that you can still, it's, it's unfortunately, I, you know, there was no camera phones back then. So yeah, I only had a few pictures and you could see that's a ghost right. I mean, I hope you could see that ghost right at 14 with uh, the splash. And every month what I would do is I would change and I'd put a new piece of art up just to display it. I put a tag on it and I put a name, you know, but here's what it is. Just to, you know, just to try and introduce a little bit more. Uh, comic art to you know some of the the the, the, the comic collectors. And this year, uh, Supergirl's my wife now. Very well. Yeah, Supergirl's my wife now. I, I married her. <laughs> yeah. So this is like ninety. What year is this? Ninety two, ninety three. Yeah, I must say uh, ninety two, ninety three, maybe. Okay. Ghost Rider one was nineteen ninety, I think. So probably a year or two later. This is great. So you see, I have a, a stack of texas pages from ghost rider that's uh the ghost rider 16 i think where where uh what the hell's that guy's name not green goblin the other dude hobgoblin is in it and tex uh i guess i'm un 
officially the, the first art rep because Tex would give me a stack of pages and I'd sell them for him. Then I would just send him the money. I mean, there was no sell back then. So I had to put a check in the mail and send it. And we did that a couple of times. And I, I sold, uh, I sold some of his art. Uh, we did pretty good with it. Uh, it was, it was fun, man. I had some great stuff. So was it a uh, Halloween at the shop or was, was this a special occasion? So every year, I mean, for the four or five years, uh, yeah, Jeff Dower's hard boiled, man. Great story. Uh, so every year I would do a, uh, Halloween, because we had a pretty decent sized warehouse in the back and I would do a Halloween party for, uh, for my customers and some friends, you know, there's a liquor store next door and he was always cool with me, even though I wasn't 21 yet. I don't encourage underage drinking, by the way. Uh, so I would do a party once a year. Uh, um, and this is just some of the costumes. That's me in the samurai suit. I look a little different now, obviously. But uh, there's a little friends. longer. Yeah, and I, oh, this is cool because you could see one of one of the best storylines in the nineties. I thought was Executioner's song, and you could see the Executioner's song mobile. You see the mobile right there? Oh yeah, it's up there. So yeah, that was a that, that was a good time, man. It's probably one of my best memories. Well, I, I am jealous. I mean, so not only did you have the movie theater on one side, but you had the liquor store on the other. So yeah. <laughs> there were probably and, some late nights and, at the at the uh, shop. Oh, dude, I could tell you stories, but off the record. <laughs> my daughter always says, Dad, you should my, my daughter always says, Dad, you should write a book because you got so many freaking stories. But uh I think my wife would leave me. <laughs> well, I think some people were hoping you were gonna tell some of the stories from when you had to take the talent out. Uh, you know, on a Friday or Saturday evening during, you know, during the con when, when uh, sure. you, know, you had to keep everybody entertained. You, so uh, one of the, one of the, one of the better stories, and I wish you, if you ever get Dale Keown on, I would love to get on with him again. Uh, not again, but I, I would love to bring it up. When Dale Keown came into town back in the early nineties. So I was about 18 ish and he was maybe 23, 24. Everybody knows how he looks. He's a tall, lanky dude, very thin, mm -hmm. looks young. So he came to town and he he was quiet. He wasn't like Tex or, or Harv. Javier so tired. Uh, I call him Harv. Him and Tex were, they, they really were, they loved to go out and have fun. They were related. Uh, they were in-laws. Somebody's sister, brother, some crap like that. They were, they were, uh, they were, they were always together. And I guess because of the, the book. But uh, I took out, now this is a good one. So I took uh, Dale Keown out to uh, a local Moody bar. I was good friends with uh, the, uh, the manager, so he would just let me in. So we bring Dale, and they will not let Dale live. Dale gives him his Canadian passport, and he's 25, 26 years old. And the guy says, look, this is bullshit. I don't believe in this thing. Give me a license. And they would not let Dale in. And I said to my buddy, I said, dude, I'm 18. You're letting me in. You're not letting him in. He's actual 26. And they wouldn't let us in. So the, the permission he drew for me, I wish I had it still. He drew Hulk, like the security guard, holding up Dale Keown saying, no – ID, no entrance. It was it was awesome. It was, it was so fun. He was super, super nice. And uh, never got to buy any of his art, unfortunately, because back then, I don't care what anybody says, but back then he wasn't selling art. I mean, I know Yoram knows a lot more about Dale than I do because he's, you know, he's been buying his art for a whole long, a heck of a long time. But back then, he really wasn't selling much art. You know, I wanted to buy a cover. I wanted to buy something. And he goes, nah, I really don't sell my art. So, uh, unfortunately, never got anything everything i have now of his art has been through trades and purchases i got a few nice pieces from kel recently i'm not recently, maybe next year last year and i'm still looking for that cover i'd love to buy a killer cover and they uh they're few and far between unfortunately they do not come up on the uh, on the market too often that's for sure i mean people who have them love them i mean there there are there are some diehard Keown fans like like yoram i mean without question there, yeah. there are several he's mikhail has he's, he's one of my favorites He's yeah. one of my favorite artists, Dale. And, and uh, you know, the, the brief moment I had with him, he was really, really nice guy. And we, we, you know, it was fun. And it's funny because when you had Bart Sears on, mm -hmm. I wanted so bad to, to reach out because when he came down, he had come down with his girlfriend to the, to the Miami convention. And same thing, you know, uh, he goes, hey, you want to go out, uh, take him out? We went out for dinner. We got along real well. I brought my girlfriend, Supergirl, and all four of us, you know, had a good time. So he had, if, if I remember correctly, you know, I don't, I think he had been to, you know, Miami, South Beach, you know, near the ocean. So he really wanted to go explore. So he said, yeah, let's go. So me and my wife took him and his girlfriend. We went down to the beach and we actually went jet skiing together. And we had a blast. He was super, super cool. He, uh, I bought a couple of uh, Conan 
portfolio plates from him back then. I bought the two covers, which oh, wow. has been a long time. I've sold those, but yeah, he was, and he was a blast. He's a, his, his, his humor is a bit arid, a bit dry, but he's, he was super, super cool. And uh, next time you've ever had him up, I want to bring that story up and see if he remembered because I got to imagine he does, right? Well, if he, if he had as good a time as you did, he said, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Well, that's 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 crazy. I mean, yeah. Well, so you you had a kind of a charmed early life, getting to hang out with creators and everything too. I mean, that's uh, I mean, really, really fortunate because a lot of people don't have that uh, kind of opportunity to uh, to meet. You know, well, I mean, I guess you could say we, we you know we get to meet some of the creators early, but you you really got to rub elbows with them, hang out, go to bars when you were eighteen, and uh, <laughs> you know, and 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 get paid to do it. I mean, that's like. Uh, that we'd all who who in the uh, chat today wouldn't get in line to, to to have that kind of thing happen today. You know, with the Baltimore Comic Con this upcoming weekend, I'd love to be able to get paid to hang out with some people. <laughs> so, shoot, man. Yeah. So, so what happened with the with the store though? You you only had it for five or six years. I only had uh, you know uh, the days of people stopping to buy the 20, 20 issues of the chromium covers and the the bagged uh, car covers stopped. Business changed a lot for me. Look again, I was a kid. I, you know, I didn't really know how to run a business. Uh, the truth, truth is, I did it for fun and I enjoyed it. And after like four or five years, I, you know, we closed up shop and I moved back to Jersey because, you know, my wife, who's actually the student, wanted to go back. And I was like, all right, what am I gonna do here? You know, so uh, I closed it. I always wanted to do it again, but it's not the same, you know. And, and back then, you had much more availability to speak to the artist. It was much more open it's not like now now it's a little bit more a lot more difficult to do the things that you did back then well in the 90s were the were, were definitely a heyday for comics I, I completely missed it see from the time you had your shop till about the time you ended it i i wasn't buying any comics i, I missed all of the chromium cover uh you know craze i didn't know what yeah. the age of, of apocalypse was and uh, so yes executioner song didn't read it when it came out i read it after the fact yeah. <laughs> great storyline uh, it was it was incredible uh, so you have a kid here saying this guy is cool, Alana Gomez. That's my daughter. She's being a wise ass like her dad. And then you have <laughs> thank you, Alana. <laughs> and, then, and you have Stanley asking about other cons, dude. I wanted to go to San Diego so bad, but I never, mm -hmm. never, and I'm embarrassed to say because my kids wanted to go too. I've never been to San Diego. I've been to others. I went to Dragon Con. I've been to, um, I went to uh, the Wizard Experience, whatever the hell that was called back in the day. I've been to a few others on the east coast but i never made it to san diego and the only convention i ever did you know selling was in miami and fred greenberg's great eastern i did his uh religiously it always made me good money unfortunately i never made it to any of the bigger ones on the west coast but i'm still thinking about it i'd love to get out after one day it's just i'm not a big fan of the crowds i'm not a big fan of all the hoopla and hey look it's uh this panel this other bullshit it's this other I i'm not into to that you know I, it doesn't do anything for me i don't want any jerk off autograph i'm not into that you know i just uh i like to go i like to talk to artists i like to talk art with people you know james has invited me a couple times to do a couple of shows to just to go and meet everybody that i would like to do so i probably will in the future but i, I don't really want to you know fight lines with people to go to san diego uh um you know i'm kind of a cantankerous right. guy i'm you know I, I don't have patience for people so it's you know uh, i don't think i'll ever go out there but yes i wish i had back in the Day. Well, you yes, can't Dave, think those are probably, they, yeah, they, <laughs> at an early age, you're not even 50. You're not even 50, and you're considering yeah. yourself cantankerous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they was asking about Bisley. Yeah, those are four of them, dude. There's uh, four hanging. Uh, I think I have one of them coming up in, in the, the pictures, but I have the hell which way this way. This guy is, uh, I think I have the poster in my gallery. How do I point here? I don't do this often. That's in my gallery. The one next to it up there. Ah, oh, damn it! What you do to me? Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. That's uh, that's, uh, that's a beauty, you. but uh, <laughs> thanks. That's a beauty, but unfortunately, the the, the glare. That's the uh, the Jason cover. And you can see the naked broad right down there. But that's uh that's the Jason cover that he did. It's really nice. I got that from Berkey years ago. And then the one right there is uh the hell is it? Is uh the oh the scrap uh, scrapbook? And then that's Goth, which I think he has a better picture to show you later. So yes, I do have a few business. Yes, yeah, that's true. Well, you know, I think you would like. Uh, I mean, if that, you know, if you're looking for more low key shows with uh, cool people to hang out with from the hobby, I mean, you know, Heroes is definitely a good show. I mean, we had a great time this year in June. 
um you know it was uh you know again we had probably had 250 300 people from calf that were there so it was a it was a good hangout as far as uh, just hanging out with our other collectors and plenty of artists and not not too crowded so that would be a good one. Have you been to MegaCon? I assume. I mean, it's in Orlando, so. Oh shit! Yeah, I go all the time to MegaCon. Not, yeah, I go all the time. Matter of fact, I got a funny story, man. I could talk forever. Uh, I the first time I went to MegaCon back in two thousand and maybe twelve or thirteen. Tex was there, and I had not seen Tex for years. And like I said, honestly, me and Tex were pretty good friends. I, I've been to his house a couple times. We did New Year's. I got sick and puked with him. I mean, he was a he was a good dude. So I see him at the damn show, and I had my giant goatee, much bigger than this, and I had my long hair. And I go, Tex, he goes, who the hell are you? I, I said, come on, dude, Rob from Miami. He goes, holy shit, Rob, I'm your thing. So it was funny uh, that he still remembered after all those years, you know. Um, so, yes, I do that. I do go regularly to MegaCon. You know, I have one of my daughters that lives up there, and I have a brother that lives up there. So I, I, I do. I go there every year. I go all the time. Well, I, I do hope to start my own show in uh, the Orlando area in 2024, feb- around February. So that's that's the plan. Put me in. I'll be there. All right. No, I'll no, be I'll, there. I'll definitely, we, we, will, uh, we will definitely talk. I'm trying to you know, talk with as many uh, local collectors and artists just to kind of get a feel for where we should have it and, uh, you know, just kind of craft the show around what, what everybody wants out of a show. So that's uh, that's my plan. So yeah, but next year I'm still, I'm, I think I'm going to be unpacking in February, 2023 still. So uh, 2024 is where it's going to start. But, uh, but no, that's, that's uh no, it's not going to be called bill con Marcus. So forget that. Uh, <laughs> no, not at all. But, uh, Marcus, but yeah, James is in the audience. Man. Such a wise ass. <laughs> yes, yes, I see. And he is wise too. Not just a wise ass. He's very wise for, for his, for his age. One of the more knowledgeable James, guys. James in the chat. They know the shit. He's the right guy to know. He's the right guy to know. I told very, him to do fingertip push-ups next time I see him. <laughs> Don't uh, let this fool you, my friend. Like Kingpin. Don't let this girl fool you. <laughs> we can tell you know we you. I hope you do make it to Heroes, or or uh, at least I make it to a show where you're going to be at because uh, you, you would definitely be somebody we would all I, I would want to hang out with. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Yeah. I, I, and the uh, fact that you I drink Guinness, I, I've already, you know, we already have something in common. So, uh, <laughs> but so, uh, yeah, so after that, the, you know, the roaring nineties were over and, uh, you know, you, you closed the shop and you're in, in Jersey, you're still buying art in the, uh, you know, while you're, while you're up North. I actually was still buying art, but I started making it a little bit more personal, uh, personal. I, I, I would go to the, the dealer, like I, I I uh, I went out. I don't know if you know Conrad Eschenberg. You know he's an old time oh, yeah. dealer for comic art. I used to go see him. You know. Yeah, he was a good I guy. Go I mean, he he kind of disappeared about yeah. eight years ago, but yeah, I I, I met him in uh, right around two thousand, and you know he was a he was a really nice guy. Had great great artwork. Yes, he's always and uh, uh, Albert Moore. I would go and meet in uh, you know Midtown somewhere to buy art. So I, I still was buying art. I have. One of my, I mean, I have a ton of regrets. We always say that, but you know, thirty years collecting, I've I've gotten rid of some great stuff, and it kind of, you know, anyway, it, it sucks. But I, Tex, was such a good friend that he actually gave me the cover to Ghost Rider Thirteen, the first painting painted cover he had. Yeah, Zerzulo has it now, and when he gave it to me, I was ecstatic. I kept it forever. But I went to go meet Conrad, and Conrad had a gorgeous Ryson. Cycle the Werewolf cover. And I wanted it so bad. And I had to give him some good stuff. And that was one of the pieces, which later I found out he sold it to Zerzula. But yeah, uh, Conrad, I would visit, you know, Albert Moy a couple times. Uh, I didn't know Mike Berkey back then. I don't know if he was around. I, you know, those were really the only two guys. There was one other guy I don't want to mention the thing because he's, he's kind of a thief and a break. And if anybody wants me to tell him who it is, you can email me personally. There's a guy that you got to stay away from. And he's been around for probably 30 years. And, uh, He's real bad news, you know. So we'll we won't say that here. here. People, but, but you know, I want to hear after no, the show's over. <laughs> I will. Oh, 100 percent I'll All tell right. you because if I ever see him, I'm gonna choke him because he owes me. But yeah, I'll tell you for sure, Bill. I'll tell All right. you uh and then, you, know, you probably know. 
I probably do. I mean, you know that. I mean, I'm sure in any hobby you end up with with some bad apples, and we've we've definitely had our fair share here or there over the years. So, but but you know the the, the good people have certainly outweighed you know the, the bad. I mean, like Conrad always sticks out as somebody who I I, I regret the fact that he kind of disappeared on 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 us all because he was a I knew he, you know he always had health issues, but he was always such a nice guy, and uh, I always enjoy seeing him at San Diego every year because he's set up there, and I never got to see him at any other shows, but that one, but um. But yeah, definitely, you know, a true gentleman in the hobby who who really cared about his customers and he, and he loved the art. And I can't believe you got a cycle of the werewolf cover. From him. That's sure pretty did. damn amazing, man. Yeah. yeah, it's long been sold, but yeah, I, I did. I got a great uh, the the actual the actual cycle of the werewolf cover of the old man and uh, the werewolf jumping through and the, the old guys with the hatchet. Like that's going to do anything. Uh, you know, the uh, the original cover actually, not the the reprint. Well, I'm jealous. I'm, I've never owned a Wrightson before, but uh, but something from from that, you know, from Cycle of the Werewolf be, would be incredible. I mean, that would be high on my list. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, there's there's uh, there's a few, a few things out there. <laughs> yeah, I've had a few. Well, a few. if I'm ever down your way, I'm gonna I'm just gonna invite myself over. Dude, I'm 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 easy like that. I'm I'm old school. Come on by, knock on the door, and my wife will make some pasta, and I'll throw you some Guinness. <laughs> I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> Shoot, man. <laughs> um, so, all right. So you, there, there's the, that side of you. But like you said, you've been down uh, this way now for 20 years. So so it seems like it doesn't matter where you're at, you're still buying and you're still enjoying the uh, the, the hobby. But, but you know, what's curious is you didn't start a calf gallery until, gosh, what year did you start? Let me see. I'm in your calf. January 2020. So what, what pr prompted you to do that after, I mean, calf had been online for almost uh, almost 17 years at that point. And you had to have been there, check, you know, or maybe maybe used it to find artwork or something. But what? Why no gallery for that line? Well, I have admired it from afar, my friend. I've always enjoyed going through the uh, the, the galleries, you know, for many years. I just never, I'm, you know, the few guys that I talk with, I'm friendly with, they'll tell you, you know, James, one of them, Aranga, probably. I'm very private with my collection. I'm not a big fan of showing everything I got. And for no other reason, I just, uh, you know, I, I just don't, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, no, no reason, no real reason. I'm, I'm not a fan of people soliciting my art because they love all you, but that's not yep. really even a reason because I'm not an idiot. I know what stuff is worth. You know, I, uh, I just, I, I really never did. 2020, it was, uh, it was COVID and I was sitting around like everybody else. And I said, ah, you know what? Let me throw a couple pieces. And I think the first piece I put up was uh, the Juggernaut cover. Uh, Wolverine 93, that's mm -hmm. the one. Uh, and uh, I've, I've made it Wolverine centric, but I, I really have so many different pieces. Like you can see behind my shoulder, it's this one. That's four covers of Spawn. You know, those are the, the Capullo, uh, McFarlane, you know. I, 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 so I, I have a lot. I have Bisley over there uh, uh, looking at some Finch. I got some, a couple pieces from Alex Ross over there. I got some, yeah, I mean, I got a lot. I just, it, I just made it a Wolvie centric, you know, calf gallery. Uh, gallery, yeah. And it's, it's not like he's my favorite artist, Adam Hubert. And I hope he's not watching because you know I, I like the guy and I still text him every once in a while. He's a cool dude. It's not my favorite artist, you know. Um, I love his art. He's one of my favorites. But there's other people that I, I really, really love. That uh, you know, I love McFarland. I've loved McFarland since I was a kid. I, I love Keown. Uh, and Scott Wingo's a big McFarland collector. Wingo. He, he, yeah, I know uh, he is. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he's asking no if you comment. have any uh, McFarlane and Spidey. <laughs> no comment, Wingo. No, yeah, I do. I have a couple. <laughs> nothing big, nothing huge, no big covers, nothing like that. I wish I did, you know. Uh, and if one ever came up, I, I know what they cost. I, I would, I would make an attempt to try and get one, but I have not, you know, never had really the opportunity. I wasn't really into the the one that just came up with heritage mm -hmm. you know but I, I would i you know i got some good stuff to trade uh, and if i have to buy it i'm not scared of spending money I, I would do it do you view uh the selling of your artwork when you have to do it or trading i mean that's that's just you leveling up i mean you, you don't you if you ever need to sell artwork it's more for you know getting something else something that uh, is maybe would be out of reach otherwise i mean or how do you how do you approach the artwork in your collection i guess is really what i'm asking so you have to forgive me because I was reading Jason Moore's comment because he sold me uh, those killer cow covers. And yes, I did frame them. Can I turn my computer and show them? Yeah, please do. All right, I'll hold even, on. Uh... You see it in that corner, dude? 
Way up there. There you go. Yeah, you oh, see. There you go. Top corner. I don't know if he sees it. Yeah. So I did. Um, I framed it probably four months ago. It got back to me. So I apologize. I didn't mean to cut you off. But what was your question? Uh, well, like Tim Guerrero said, you've sold a lot of art was his question. And I just kind of thought, well, but I think you've mentioned when you've sold or traded artwork, it seemed like usually you were doing it to trade up. I mean, how do you, I, I yes. assume that's, that's probably more hundred percent why you're selling, right? It's just, a, it's for a bigger purchase. 100%. Yep. Yeah. hundred percent. Or just something I want that I didn't have. Like, for example, I've, I've, I've used calf, uh, two or three occasions to, to, to move art. I don't sell it. I put for trade, you know, but I, mm -hmm. I put some, I think some pretty decent pieces. I put up a, an X factor cover by Portasho. I think it was X factor 66 with, uh, with Cyclops holding the baby, you know, and I got a tremendous oh, yeah. trade for it. So it wasn't necessarily trading up, but I got, that cover cost me five grand when I bought it 15 years ago. So I, I got a ton of art, all great covers of great quality artists that I really wanted for it. So, I, I mean, I try, you know, a lot of times I will trade up, but if, if I just want to get a killer trade, I'll give up a big piece. You know, I've had that forever, so I was ready. And I usually mm -hmm. don't sell a piece if I don't have another one. So I might have another one. Um, I, I, I put up a couple of Gary Frank Hulk covers I got great trades for. Um, you know, so I, I like trading. It's such a, that's such a fun, for me, that's such a fun part of the hobby. I love talking with people and trading. I'm not a fan of the, you know, whenever I've done a few trades with Berkey, you know, I'll call him at two in the morning. I'm like, dude, I don't want to do this via email. I want to talk to you so you can hear how sad I am of your crazy, horrible offer you just gave me. You know, so I like, I like, I like doing it. You know, I like doing it face to face. I'm still that guy who likes to do shit face to face. So, um, yes, out with the old and with the new. That's perfect. That's actually perfect, Wes. I like yeah. the, you know, the changing around. A couple pieces that we're going to show you later. I got part of the trade for that, uh, that uh, X Factor. And these days, some of these prices are nuts. So if I can capitalize on, on a piece that I have another one of, I'm going to do that to get more art because I don't want to go and spend 20, 30 Gs for, uh, for, for a cover that I can trade for. You know, so I always look at the number before I make that jump. But unfortunately, sometimes we, we have to lay out the cash. <laughs> that is true. Well, uh, and that's why sometimes you have to sell if you don't have the cash on hand. So yes. I mean, that makes perfect sense. So you, so you do like the trade though. I mean, that's, that's something I've, I've not done a whole lot of, you know, is trading. I mean, it's, I, I think it's just cause it's not in my blood. Maybe I, maybe I shy away from that face to face cause it feels more like a confrontation, but, you, but you, if somebody expresses interest in something that you've got, or you're interested in something, you know, trade is trade is a viable path to, to get an artwork for you. hundred percent. I love trading. I love, you know, I love, I, I can't tell you how much I love trading. I love trading a lot. I lose sometimes, I win sometimes, but ultimately I have I have a strategy. You know, I tell people all the time when they reach out to me, hey man, what do you think of this price? What do you think of that price? I tell people, listen, forget about what the freaking piece is worth. Do you like the piece? Because you got to live with it. So buy it or trade for it if you freaking like it. So I always try and trade for my, if I do a trade, one of the pieces in that trade, it has to be, in my opinion, the best piece. Not necessarily the most valuable piece, but the best piece. Do you, I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. I, I, I no, want to I make do. sure the best yeah. piece is in the trade back to me. For me. Mm -hmm. You know, I've well, done I mean, a couple but... trades with Dinesh. And by the way, Man. Dinesh is awesome. He, I, I call him and he picks up the phone all the time. He, he's Dinesh, I love that dude. And I've done a couple trades. He kicked my ass on this last one. On the Casada, the Casada, I gave him that awesome Casada he posted recently. He gave me a good whooping on that one, but I'll get him. <laughs> See, but now, what, what, but how can you call it a whooping in a trade if you just said you got to always feel like you got the better of the trade? I mean, uh, you, did you not get something back in return that you wanted, or, uh, or you know, or or is what you got back something that was something that uh, is valuable and is trade bait somewhere down the road, and so you just kind of took it? I mean, Ooh. is it? Yeah. You that that, that right. makes sense. So, so you're not thrilled with it, but you knew that what you got was a valuable piece of art, and it's it's something yes. that uh, yeah. Well, then there's, a, I guess there's nothing the, wrong with that because yeah. you lost a piece of art that you didn't you would have rather probably held on to, right? Is that uh, yes, yes. That yeah. that that Casada double cover I traded them. That it's gorgeous. It's it a, is. My yeah. my drawback is is a poster magazine, so I, I've never been a fan of those. 
So I traded you, you. You have a picture. You have a piece of art. You know, we'll, we'll talk about it later when we bring it up. The, the the trade that I made him, it's a great piece. It's great. I'm not a big fan of the guys, but I know that there's people out there that are going to want the piece. So when I see something I really like, I'm going to just take it to flip it. I don't think I could do as well of a trade with that ex that, with that poster magazine double cover. I have other Casada. And the post magazine is gorgeous. If that was on an X Men cover, oh, that's a hundred grand, eighty grand, whatever. It, it's all, but I think the post magazine holds it back a little. And Dinesh, when he loves something, you know, he's ready to trade. He's, you know, I traded for that Jim Lee cover for, for my Spirit of Venom, the Adam Kubrick mm-hmm. Spirit of Venom. I, I you know, I, I uh, damn, I, I was very big, big Jim Lee out of it, you know. So you gotta love Dinesh for that because he, when he wants to trade, he sees something he wants. He's, he's he don't care. He goes, I want. So let's let's talk. And I like when people want to do that when they trade, not necessarily to do, you know, to, to to take advantage, but they're they're encouraged and they're hungry to make a trade. So, you know, I like to try and do a trade. A lot of times people are like, well, yeah, you know what? I, I, you know, <laughs> I post a couple of my Gary Frank covers and I'm like, listen, man, I really want the cover. I know you want to trade. Go through my gallery, but I really don't want to trade anything. So you can go through my gallery and see what you think. Uh, but I don't know if I'm going to trade. I sent the guy back an email. I said, dude, they, don't bother me. Then they, they, they're not going to even bother looking. <laughs> right, right. Uh, well, there's a lot of people who who approach you, uh, you know, collectors and don't really have a game plan, I think, uh, you know, when they get get started. Like, they think it's just going to be easy. Uh, here's, a, here's a good question from Johnny McCloskey was, uh, how do you handle who sends the art first in a trade? Or do you just trust and send it immediately? <laughs> you know? Ah, good uh, question. Johnny's a good dude. I've spoken to him a couple of times. He is. So, uh, look, nobody knows me. So, unfortunately, I, I got to, you know, I'll use guys like James and other people that know me as a as a reference. I don't really trade with people I don't know. If it's somebody I don't know, I don't give a crap. You're sending me the art first. And if you don't want to send it to me first, then we don't do the business. We don't do the deal. You know, I, 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 I've done enough business with guys like Glenn and Mike, you know, and some of the guys on CAF that, they, they kind of know I'm a decent dude, or, or they don't think I'm a decent dude. At least they know that I'm not going to screw you. So uh, I, I like to get the art first. But if it's if I'm dealing with a guy that I already know and they want me to send it, I just ship it. I don't care, you know. No, I I, I need to know the dude. All right, he needs to tell me some people he knows. If he insists, if I don't feel comfortable, I want the art first. If he doesn't want to do it, then we don't do the deals. I mean, it's kind of that simple. Yeah. Well, I think references are something that, because I get asked a lot on CAF, uh, you know, just generally to the site, people will say, can I trust this guy? Can I trust this dealer? Can I trust this collector? And, you know, if I bought from that, from them, I'll, I'll actually say, well, yeah, sure. I bought from them and, and say something honest. But if I have never bought from them before, I always say, you know, uh, you know, you should probably ask them for references, you know, because that's usually the safest path to, uh, to see. And then hopefully it, the, their references are people, you know, or people you've dealt with. And, you know, and that's kind of how your inroad to feeling confident that you can deal with somebody because, yes. you know, the, they're, the way you're viewed in the hobby by other collectors or dealers, auction houses, whatever, you know, is it, it sticks with you. So if you if you're a bad if you're a bad egg in some kind of way, you're they're they're, they're going to let you know. So, oh, you, you know, you, you can't yeah. get away with yeah, You can't get away with shit these days. And Timothy is actually right. Guerrero. He says the person who reaches out first. Uh, and that, that's true. Usually if someone's reaching out to me because I have something up for trade, I'll tell them, listen, man, you reach out to me, so send me my stuff. If someone is kind of insistent, I've done this before. I say, when you send the art, email me or text me your, your air, you know, the air bill number. Yeah. And I'll do it that same minute. I don't mind running to the place. I've done that a bunch of times. You know, uh, Of course, they can still fake you out. But I, yeah, usually, like he said, if you're reaching out to me, you need to send it to me first. Yeah, that's true. And um, Mikhail mentioned he mentioned that you you got him out of his comfort zone recently in, in, in a trade. But he as a point of reference, he said, "How many years somebody's been on calf, and if they so, you know if they're a premium member, go a long way." I mean, I, I had a recently I had somebody contact me that said, you know, they sent some some money to somebody, they didn't get their art, you know, it's probably a cheap piece of art, like two hundred fifty three hundred dollars, and uh, and I and, I, and it had been a few weeks, and I, I checked the guy's calf gallery, and I saw that he hadn't logged in in two weeks. So I said, well, I think, you know, at first the guy's been premium and a member on the site for, for a while. So I trust him already, even though I've never dealt with the guy. 
you know, and the fact that he hasn't logged in in a few weeks tells me that maybe there's something off. So I said, just give him a few more days, and, you know, and, and I even emailed the uh, the seller just to kind of give him a, a, a nudge to see what was going on. And he came back, you know, like two days later and said, I, I've been off calf dealing with some things. I sent the, mo the, the money back to the guy, you know, so, so it worked out. But it, it tends to be true, at least the way, you know, the way I view uh, calf as well is that. If they're a premium, no, no, nobody who's out there to scam you is going to be a premium member of the site. You know, they're not going to give me yeah. seventy-five. They're not going to give me, give me seventy-five cents. So, you know, that's always like a number one. You know, you can at least have a little bit of faith there. But uh, time on calf, yeah. it, you know, I think, is another. But, but, the, but, uh, but again, <laughs> references are huge. They are, they are very. And huge. don't and don't believe Mattel. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing. I gave him a killer <laughs> Wolverine cover for a bunch of hacky freaking Dale Keown pieces. Nice try, buddy. I see you. I see you. Mikhail, I'm kidding. It was a good trade. It was he. He, he treated me right. Oh no, Mikhail's a good guy. He's going to be on uh, the show on Thursday, picking smart work. So uh, yeah, no, he and I are good friends. So yeah, that's that's uh, that's awesome. But so the thing is, you've traded with with a lot of people. Then I mean, yeah, if you dealt with Dinesh, mm -hmm. you dealt with Mikhail. I mean, so that's uh, yeah, yeah. And you know, Jason the Ambrosio. I mean, he you know he he's a he's a I don't know. Fan too. I just, yeah, I just know the reputation. You know, the, everybody says he's a great dude. I don't know him. Uh, I've never spoken to him. Uh, but yeah, I, I know, you know, everybody says he's a great dude. So I'm sure one day when we meet, we'll probably hit it off. But no, I've never met him. Uh, I really, I mean, I, I speak to whoever reaches out to me. I would try to answer back fairly quickly, you know, and uh, yeah, whoever is ready to chat, I'm there, man. Well, I, I was, well, you know, this all started with, with talking about your uh, calf cow. I'm glad you started one though. And, and, and like a lot well, of collectors, I mean, most people don't, uh, you know, they don't show their entire collections on calf. I mean, some people do, some people only show part, some people don't share anything. Right. So, uh, you know, I think it's everybody approaches calf in their own way, but that's why I was just a little curious, you know, your time in the hobby and everything, what was your, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what was holding you back, but that's, that's, that makes sense. I mean, you, you know, you want to keep uh, somewhat private and most collectors, most collectors do. I mean, you know, calf doesn't re represent probably 10% of the hobby as far as the, you know, the collectors that are out there. Is, you know, so, and and I think privacy is always going to be a big concern for people. So, um, so I don't blame I you for holding back, but, you know, I think it's great that, you you know, you've put up there what you have. Yeah. It, uh, who the, Mikey Poo Poo, whatever the hell kind of name is that, dude. That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't live in Jersey now. I used to live in Jersey. I uh, lived in Little Falls. It, it's, it, that's in Passaic County. It's by Wayne, Patterson, uh, Potawa. I live in Palm Beach Gardens now in Florida. And Jason's heard good things about you as well, too. Uh, Maki Poopoo. I met Maki Poopoo in San Diego. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't believe. Well, you know, you learn a lot about somebody over a Guinness, that's for sure. So you, you don't know for sure until you've done that. Um, but uh, sorry, I'm just trying to read through the chat. But uh, also, oh, Jason says he lived in Wayne. And you lived in Little yes. Falls. So, you know, why don't we look at some artwork? We got a lot of artwork to Let's look, look at. at some too, art. And I think there's going to be some good stories in, in there as well. So, uh, <laughs> a few, not many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I I tried to make it a point to, to, to give you stuff that I don't have in my gallery because, you know, I don't want people to think that I'm just a Wolby nerd. I, I love Wolverine. Um, but no, I, I got a ton of other work. Cool. Well, we're going to, I kind of put them in the order I got them, I think. So it may not be in the order that you remember sending them to me, but uh, let's see here. Oh, beautiful. So, so that's funny. So big fan of Boris, I assume. Yes. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet probably my favorite actor back in 99. And, uh, you know, back then we didn't have, uh, uh, you know, camera phone. So I, I, I was fortunate to get the uh, Polaroid. Uh, can I show you the picture of the Polaroid? Of course. Yeah. Let me uh, switch this around here. And it was Nina Hartley. Nina Hartley. So when I, <laughs> I'm so glad when you I, got some post it notes on there for us. <laughs> well, I had to cover the dirty parts. James wanted me to show the whole thing. Is that, the, no, is that cool. the bar you were trying to take Keon to? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It's, 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 are you kidding me? <laughs> So that bar is when, 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 uh, if you want to bring it back up, I'm going to bring it when, back. Uh, when, <laughs> when Berkey posted it, I said to myself, Holy crap, that's Nina Harley from the eighties. So right away I reached out to him. I said, I got to have that piece. And, uh, that kind of thing was like 6,500 bucks, you know, which I don't know if that was expensive, but I just had to have it. I loved it. And, um, 
that was pretty much it. You know, it, it's, uh, it reminded me of Nina when I met her back in 99 and uh, I had to buy it. Yeah, I was expecting a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger or something. So uh, <laughs> Nina was the last thing on my mind <laughs> when you were talking about uh, I mean, stars I mean, that you... Uh... I, I, I didn't want to tell you. I didn't want to, I wanted to surprise you too. <laughs> you did surprise me. See, if anybody says these shows are, are scripted, uh, there's a one one pure example of how I can assure you these shows are not. <laughs> oh man. Um, so you got this from Berkey, though. I mean, you know, Berkey's funny. He does yes. get a lot of uh you know, a lot of painted pieces. He does, uh, I think just because of some of the collectors he deals with, uh, like Jim D'Amico and whatever, I think he, he ends up getting a lot of uh, sci-fi fantasy stuff. I mean. I've always been a fan of Boris's work. He he exhibits at that uh, IX show that's in PA every year. He was there uh, this last weekend. It's it's always in October, but um, but yeah, he's a very uh, nice guy. I, I've gotten the, gotten the chance to talk with him a few times. I uh, I love Boris's art. I have probably four pieces of his hanging in my living room. I, I, this is probably my favorite, and it's a fun little story. Um, I. I've always loved his art since I was a kid. I used to sell in my store. I used to sell those goddamn fantasy uh, cal calendars like crazy. Right? Man. People loved them. Yeah, you know, I know a lot of people. They they like to bash them because uh, it's it's all photo pictures and he paints the photos. It's not as 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 flowing as Frazetta, which I know Frazetta is the best. I love Frazetta, but I can't get one of his paintings. So, but I've always liked Forrest, and you know, I know people like knocking them, but I like them. I can give a crap if people think I like them. Oh yeah, I've never had a problem with his work, and I I agree. I I, I probably owned at least five or six Boris calendars, uh, you know, from the well, I probably started got my first one around eighty six, so probably from eighty six to ninety one, ninety two. I mean, if you were mm, a fan yeah. of that genre, D and D, of course you're going to have a Boris calendar. That guy, uh, I, I I was going to send you some of my D and D art. I uh, I have a couple pieces. Don't pieces tell me. I don't want to. Now you're killing me. Yeah. From in fact. Well, I'll send it to you separately. I, I, I mean, but I, I have sold a couple to Matt Coder. You know, everybody, Matt Coder is buying all that art. Yeah. So yeah. I have sold him. I sold him a couple pieces, some nice ones for some good money. Uh, but I still have a couple for myself. Well, okay, yeah, we're definitely going to chat just for a few minutes after the show. I own a few D and D pieces too, but nothing, nothing like vintage. You know, I own stuff from the early two thousands, maybe maybe late nineties, but just stuff that I was able to pick up from uh, from a few artists, but. You know, my my dream is you know a Bill Willingham piece from uh, the mid '80s. You know, give me just a mm -hmm. pen and ink, anything, and I'm all over it. I don't care what it is. It could just be a a battle axe, not even with a dwarf holding it. At this point, I'll take just a just a weapons drawing from from some you know by Jeff D or uh, Errol Otis or something. I, I don't care what it is. You know, and even Tim Truman, mm -hmm. I love I love his yeah. stuff. He was a little he was later though, but um, but no, I love all that stuff. Yeah, I all you know everything I got is all ninety centric, some late eighties, uh, but everything I just that was my my wheelhouse. I just loved everything that came out. Any any D and D I have or any D and D I ever had was always early nineties because that was my favorite time. I, I guess maybe that's what I remember the most. Like you know, we always talk about the nostalgia of the show, mm -hmm. you know, and we uh, of the, uh, so it's just what we're nostalgic for. <laughs> Jason says, uh, "Show the X Men stuff and stop the D and D crap." <laughs> All right, Jason. I don't think I, I didn't think I gave the X Men stuff. Did I? I don't think I did. Uh, no, there's some we'll X Men see. stuff. There is, there is. Oh, there is. Okay. And, oh, yeah. Michael Wagen said the Hildebrand calendars were great too. Yes, they were. I, I definitely. I've got a yes, few Hilde, Hildebrand prints. You know, because I could and, never own an original. And if I could solicit here, I would love to buy. If anybody has, or anybody knows that has it. Uh, or trade, I really want the Hildebrandt Wolverine number 90 painted cover. Um, if anyone knows who has it, reach out to me, let me know. I'll, I'll throw you a sawbuck or two, you know, but I'd like to, I'd like to find who has that cover because, you know, as we talk later, I have the whole book and that's the only piece I don't really have. Not that it matters in the sense that it's not Adam Kubert, but it is part of the comic. So I'd like to get that. There guys, you guys are still talking about Nina Harley. What the hell's the matter with you? We just saw, uh, we just, we got some good stuff going on. <laughs> Triple X women are better. <laughs> Marcus, Marcus doesn't let certain things go, but that's all right. That's why yeah, we, we, we love him. He's great, Marcus. <laughs> we appreciate uh, your comments, dude. 
Oh yeah, without on the artwork in the chat. I mean, I don't know how he does it, but uh, but we're gonna shift gears a little bit here. It's not not an X Men artwork here. It's but we've got uh, some Daredevil here for you, Jason. So that's the piece I traded. Uh, uh, the mesh. Keep thinking Don Shitpool. <laughs> that's that 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 guy who was uh, busting his chops. Yeah. So that's the piece I traded the mesh uh, for my. Uh, I, gave, I gave him the the uh, Casada double cover and I, I took this i mean it's classic john Romita jr it's it's williams and Inc., williams and inks and it's it's an iconic run you know from the late 80s so uh i i i, I don't have any daredevil i've never been a big fan but i know there's good value to that piece and i know i'll be able to get a good trade from it you know sometime in the future so that's what i traded him he housed me uh but i'll get him i'll get him back <laughs> yeah, no, it is a good cover. And Jason's a he, you know, maybe he's not a Daredevil fan, but he is a huge John Romita Jr. fan. So he said that works. So he appreciates that. Cool. No, that's that's a good I I think that's a you know, I, I couldn't I can't imagine the value on it. I, I'm not a I don't follow Romita Jr.'s uh stuff too well, but uh, but no, this is this is awesome. I mean yeah, uh, it's a big huge image, it's shoot. iconic, it's beautiful. I, yeah. Well, and it's not in your calf, right? Or is it in your calf already? No, hell no, no, no. I didn't give you anything that's in my calf. Uh, nothing. Everything that's you see is fresh and new. All right. Well, let's keep the fresh and new flowing here. So uh, this next piece is a uh, is a painted piece as well. And uh, Yeah, that's damn. Doth. That's uh, Bisley. Yep. That's huge. That's the one that was over Man. my shoulder. It's a huge piece. That was a comic that came out in the early 90s. He only did the cover. But it's pretty funny because in the comic, I don't know if any of you guys read it, uh, he, uh, this demon that they, they create, Goth, he's a naked demon with a huge spawn bouncing around in the, in, in, in the comic. So when he did the cover, basically, he, he, he kind of positioned me on perfectly to hide the junk. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's busy. It's gorgeous, big, giant painting. It's over my right shoulder, I think. And that's something that I don't have posted either. How long have you owned on, on this one? I've had that for a few years. I traded, man, Matt Ellis. Matt Ellis is a great guy. If if he if you have something he wants, you can really, really do an awesome trade with him. I had something, and I forget what it was, that he really wanted. And I love, always loved this painting. And uh, we made a real comfortable, sweet trade. Uh, I drove down to meet him because he's also, I think he's in Miami or Homestead. Yeah, he's in I Miami. To meet him. Yeah, I drove down to meet him, and we switched, and uh, that was it. So it's, I love this painting. No, it, it's incredible. Yeah, Matt's somebody who I've uh, well, you know, yeah, he's a, he's an awesome guy. We've we've had a lot of nice email conversations over the years. He, 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 I can't get him to be on a show with me, but um, one day maybe he'll uh, be up for it. But but he he, he similarly said, if I'm going to do a show in the Orlando area, he's all over it. So I've never met him in person. So it's I almost have to do this show in Florida just so I can get everybody together. So it's it's going to happen. Yeah, and and Matt has got some great stories too. He's He's met some of these big guys and has done some great moves. And he's got some great art. He, uh, and I, I recommend anybody if you got something he wants, man, trade him because he he's aggressive. He 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 knows what he wants. He likes what he wants. And he'll 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 do everything he can to get it. I, I I've always liked trading with him. Cool. Oh, um, thanks, Larry. He says I did better on the trade. I'm gonna tell the Nash. Ha ha. <laughs> Oh, right, right. Yeah, I was going to highlight that one for you because, yeah, Larry mentioned that Casada art is prettier, but you got the better side of the trade. I mean, yeah, Thanks. I would think so, too. I mean, I, I, but it's so hard to say. Maybe. You never know. Sure. Right. But no, it all depends on what you get sure. for that one day. Yeah, and that's that's the key. It's trade forward. I'm going to move my giant head because I want you to see how big that goth piece is. All right. Let me uh, it's swing pretty, over to you. Yeah, huge. Whew. I mean, I know the goddamn the light is in the way, but... <laughs> It's, it's it's a very big piece. It's like fourteen by twenty ish, I'm guessing. Mm, bigger than that. Twenty by twenty eight, twenty two by thirty. Holy man! All right. Well. Yes, Alex Ross is coming. Yeah. Now, Mikhail, we'll see that soon. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Well, shoot, let's keep looking then. Uh, Frank Robert Johnson was curious. If you, I guess if you like Joe Jesco's art too. As a question. Oh man, it's got rid of a great cover. Damn it! Let me see if I have the picture. Shit, give me a second. What did you get rid of? Trade. I got rid of to Conrad the same trade. I had a gorgeous savage sort of Conan cover. Uh, you want me to grab it real quick? Give me a minute. I, I yeah, don't have, to have a picture. Okay, we want to see it. Hold on, give me a second. I'm gonna unplug here. 
Don't unplug. Just set them down. Yeah, and if anybody hasn't hit the like button, I mean, Nick's not here tonight. I think I think he had something going on t- tonight, so he's not with us. But hit the like button, everybody. You know how that goes. We don't uh, we don't have Nick tonight to uh, remind us of all of that, but uh, I do appreciate it. Uh oh, let's see what we got here. Let me switch. Uh... Oh, your mic your mic is still muted, Rob. Right? How's that? Better. better? Yep, you're back. Okay, so this is the just go I traded Conrad many years ago. I loved it. I shouldn't have done it, but I did. It's classic. I don't remember the cover. I think it was Savage Sword of Conan 100. Oh, wow. A good pick. Yep. Yeah, this is uh, this is the Bart Sears piece I had that I, uh, that I got from him back in the day. I framed it beautifully. This is one of the covers for his Conan portfolio. From Bart. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, his um, Bart's uh, an amazing love, anchor. Yeah, that's great. I love his art, man. I have some cool shit from him. Uh, all right, sorry. So where were we? Ah, <laughs> we're opening up another Guinness. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, I'm way behind. I'm way behind, Rob. I'll make up for it after the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see frank robert was one of the who drew the last piece i'm not sure it, 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 he might be referring to it might be the one i pulled up on the screen and then we didn't talk about it because i got rid of it but i'll pull up i'll show it show it again this was uh this was the piece i brought up oh, here oh that's a beauty that's cyber 416 david. david finch yeah and and uh let me tell you that's a that's one of the pieces i got in in that big trade i did with my x factor that's his first cover uh, of the Cyberforce run that he had. That really long uh, run from 16 to, I don't know, 30 or 40. That's the first cover he ever did uh, for Cyberforce. I know he did a cover for Wizard, like uh, some ash can bullshit. You know, it sucked. But this is his first, first uh, uh, Cyberforce uh, cover, number 16. Damn. That's gorgeous. Uh, yeah, I, I love it. That was part of my trade. My daughter just said she remembered that one. You're supposed to be doing your homework. Why are you up still? So <laughs> shout out to my daughter. Yeah, uh, so Michael Wigan right. wanted. Know... Sorry, what year on. was it? What year was it? Michael Wigan wanted to know uh, what year. Ninety-five. That's the first series, not the second one. That's uh, the first series. Ninety-five, maybe. I sent you an email with the date. Uh, I think it's ninety-five. Oh. And Larry's absolutely right. That was that was one of the better books. I love Spawn, but I thought Cyberforce was a great book. And Mark Silvestri, he cultivated some great artists out of that uh, out of that uh, that run. And I thought that's one of his better ones. Yes, yeah, this is a, this I love is another cover. title. I miss Cyberforce. I never read it because this wasn't when I was buying comics. And then when I came, I came uh, back in nine, like ninety seven, I didn't know what what all that you know what what the whole image thing was all about. So I just kind of yeah. uh, missed out on it all. What's who the hell? Oh, it's his face. Damn it, I forgot his name. Just posted a real nice Cyber Force cover, but from 2008. Ah, Duke Fleet, he posted a real nice Cyber Force cover. Made me think about posting this up, uh, showing this to everybody. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I, I think David Finch is one of the best artists out there. You know, it's been years, and that guy does not stop putting out gorgeous art. I have some of his uh, Dark Knight double page flashes, and I mm-hmm. have a Batman cover. And I just love his art. He's again another guy that I love that I don't talk about or, or post. Well, the, hey, the chat's encouraging your daughter to uh, watch, you know, watch the show because it's more, uh, it's better than doing homework. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, I, and Mikhail had a good comment She's- here earlier. <laughs> he said, "I get the feeling that Rob has Polaroids that could bring the industry down." <laughs> oh, this, dude, Macau, when we get together, I'm going to tell you some stories about some of these guys that nobody wants to say, and you're going to be surprised. <laughs> and again, I'm sure people have stories about me. You know, it, it just, it, it just, it's, it's nobody would be surprised about, right? <laughs> <laughs> Look, my daughter's 23. I don't think she knew I had that picture, but now you know your dad isn't a saint. I have a feeling. Oh, see, look at the, now I've got, uh, I've got the uh, sex bots here hanging out with us. So here, you're I've got you're a, kidding me. This hasn't happened in. We haven't seen a. We haven't seen a, a webcam bot in like two months now. It's all the swearing. I think I, they must be bringing them in. I don't know. I, I or, or that picture. 
that that picture from uh, about 20 minutes ago. Um, I apologize. I, I no, didn't no. mean to cause uh, I put my collar on. <laughs> yeah, Just thank you. that might help. You never know. But uh, but yeah, we used to have like four or five bots hit us every single show. And uh, it's like wow. two months ago, it stopped. I kind of figured that uh, somehow maybe, uh, you know, YouTube's algorithms had finally figured out how to block them from doing that. But they're back. It's, uh, it's all right. Mm. I block them as soon as I see them. Uh, let's see here. Let's switch over. Now here, this this will make Jason happy. You know, Jason, that's a <laughs> killer freaking piece. That's a double cover of um it's a re it's the marvel collectibles number four i think 1998 1997 it's uh it's it's that series that, that marvel was doing where they're reprinting like key pieces uh key books and that's the reprint of x-men 25 and that's when magneto's pulling out the the uh you know uh wolvie's um adamantium that's done by andy kubert and uh it's gorgeous double cover i said you will pick up the actual published piece, which is a chromium cover, which is really, really cool. But I guess you didn't put it up here. It's, it's I real, didn't real put nice. it on there. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's my bad. No I, I did add a couple. No, nah, but yeah, no big deal. Uh, but yeah, that's that's. I love that cover. That's again. That's 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 something I traded for, you know. And that's. Not, I don't think it's ever been seen. It hasn't been out in in, in years. And I've had it for, I don't know, maybe six to eight months. Uh, I love it. It's a beautiful piece. It's very cool. It's um, you know, it's just another you know, just another look of of, of how it happened. And it, it, again, it's a double cover. Uh, I I like big art, and I cannot lie. Well, this is uh, probably the only chromium cover I bought. You know, again, I started probably you know collecting again a few years after this came out. But but I love the cover image so much that I, that I actually bought it. So uh, I don't have it anymore. I think I sold it a long time ago, but it was probably the only one I ever picked up. So no, this is a, it, it's a beauty. Yeah. Mikel says he only likes triples. Don't worry. Yeah, Mikel. I got a couple quadruples to show you. <laughs> oh boy. Well, everybody loves this, uh, this cover for sure. Yeah. I love it. It's awesome. And it's, it's Andy. I think somebody was asking whether it was Adam or Andy. But yes, yeah, it is Andy. Andy. I apologize. Yes. Andy. Oh man! All right. Well, that that's uh, that's a good one. So you made you've made up for your first the first few. So uh, <laughs> the, the X Men fans. It's no Nina. It's no it's no Nina Hartley Polaroid, but it's pretty damn nice. I think it's the Nina Polaroid that brought the sex bots here. Yeah, I'm Probably. not. I'm just guessing on that one though. But you did have post it <laughs> notes on there covering covering up. Yeah, the, I did. Uh, I thought I did the that right thing. You tried. Oh man! All right. What do we got? Well, well, here we go. We've got some naughty bits on this one, but they're all completely worth it. Uh, I've ta I was just oh, talking recently about piece. how much I I love uh, to get one of these, and so I was I was surprised to see this. Great this piece. is something that I you know I'm thinking Wolfie fan. Is this a, this isn't like a Wolfie fan piece, but I mean, wow, a Jeffrey Jones. So uh, yeah, wow. If you ever come down to Gardens, I'll invite you over. I have a whole wall just of the studio guys: Kaluta, Wrightson. Oh, um, Barry Smith Jones. So I, I, I love, I love all of their arts. I, I don't post it again, but I love all their art. This is uh, I, I know he later changed to Catherine, but when I talk about his art, I talk about at the moment who he was. So he's Jeff Jones and Jeff Jones. When you read this, I don't know if you can read it. It's, it, it, it kind of, it's kind of telling of how he felt. And I love this. I think it's one of the best I'm age pieces because he's talking about, uh, let me see, safer when you blend in, when you belong, the longer you live in one place, the more subtle your disguise. I'm not myself today. And boom, she's naked. You know, and I think Jeff Jones was saying something in it. And I just love it. I think it's freaking awesome. I, I love it. It's one of my favorite pieces. Hey, look, my other daughter showed up, Rihanna. You should be asleep too. You got work tomorrow. It doesn't matter with you. <laughs> yeah, their dad's a celebrity tonight. Well, you, yeah. you, you've always kind of been a rock star. I get the I get the feeling. Yeah. So. People, uh, that, hold on, Brianna. It's not as beautiful as you, my dear. Oh. But uh, yes, I love Iron Age. I think this this I think this really said a lot when he drew it. It's it's 1981 or 82, and I just think it's freaking gorgeous. Uh, it's one of my favorite pieces in. I have it hanging in my uh, living room, and it's, I, 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 that's awesome, CJ, because I never had the pleasure to meet any of them, and uh, 
I think uh, I think it's I think it's a gorgeous piece. Well, I agree. I mean, it's it's amazing. And I, I was literally talking a week or two ago about wanting to get an image piece. I mean, that's that'd be a dream, you know, those because they are they're just they're, they're not fantastic. cheap, my friend. I know they're not cheap. <laughs> I have a little bit of work yeah. to do before I can afford one, but, but no, I mean, of course, I mean, it, as far as signature work from uh, uh, Jeffrey Jones, I mean, that's, that's right there. I mean, there's, there's a lot of other things I you agree. could own, but I mean, I'm age is the thing that uh, just, it, you know, it was, you, you could tell it was personal to him and uh, you know, and it's the thing that I, whenever I think about him, I always think about, uh, you know, that artwork, you know, the work from that and because it was done in a, in a, in a different book, you know, print format when it was coming out. So it's just something about it was just really, really, uh, really, you know, was special. And yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I'm hundred percent with you. I, I really think, uh, at the time, look, uh, the demons he probably was fighting with back then, you know, maybe that's how he was letting it out slowly, uh, you know, with, with, with in, in his art. You know, uh, what's that saying? Art imitates life or something like that. And mm -hmm. I think it was a real telling piece. And when I saw it, I, you know, I, I had to get it. Well, wow, that's 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 really amazing. I, I, I've actually out of out of the guys from the studio, I only met Wrightson one time. Uh, didn't having it had a chance to I think I might have seen Kaluta at a few shows, but I've never talked to him. Um, but uh, never Jones. So, yeah. <laughs> well, you're, you're mm -hmm. saying they love the support that your your daughters are showing you tonight. So to the best ones in Orlando by you, and then the other ones in North Carolina. Very nice. Sticking sticking close by. Um, let's see, what is the next piece? I forget. Oh, Bart Sears, right? So uh, <laughs> Justice League Europe. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. It was it was it was a last minute piece to put in because you had him last uh couple weeks ago and he kept talking about how he thought he started clicking uh when he started doing the extremists, and that's one of the extremist covers. Uh, like I had told you guys earlier, I had a great time with Bart back in the early 90s. Unfortunately, it was only one time, but my, my wife and I, uh, Supergirl, the, the girl you saw earlier, we took him and his girlfriend to um, the beach and we went jet skiing. And it was such a great time. He had so much fun. He, he got really burnt because he, he's super, super pale. But uh, it was real fun. I love his art. I have a lot of his art. And uh, this is one of my favorite series when I was a kid. Yeah, I'm not a DC guy, so I never read Justice League Europe, unfortunately. But uh, but I could tell, you know, just from talking with him, you know, a week and a half ago, that you know, this was this was a, an important book for him. I think you know it was yes. challenging because it was a team book and everything, but you could tell, yes, uh, you know, he it was pretty special for him to work on it. Let's so, see. Uh, Timothy is asking about uh, all my Cuba covers. Yes, I got a ton, man. I probably got twelve or fifteen of them, and I uh, I love his art. Um, and I I I pretty much started buying his art from maybe the late nineties, early two thousands. He's kind of tough with his art. He doesn't always sell it. He's uh, he's a little bit stingy. Um, but I recently hooked up with him again through Jason. Jason is awesome at Essential Sequential, and uh, he's every once in a while he'll let one loose, and uh, I say send it over i'll take it you know i uh, just by buying you know just 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 reaching out to jason is how i get my covers there you go so it's just just asking jason i mean he's but i have heard that too that uh, the cuber brothers uh you know don't sell everything and maybe that's no. uh, that's i think uh, you know his their father held on to a lot of his artwork yeah. over the years you know same kind of thing and i think and, i think it's good I, we've talked about that a lot a lot about artists just some artists just don't want to sell or and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, we, as collectors, we have and to Andy's, be patient. Yep. And Andy's even tougher with his art. He don't sell shit. He's super, super tough with this. He don't sell nothing. I can tell you stories uh, about his X-25 cover, or some of the numbers he's been offered. He don't want to sell it. He just, he just, he don't need to, I guess, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Keep it in the family. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. I forget who. Yeah. I'd heard a story. Yeah. Like the, yeah, I remember when uh, I just remember Joe had a lot of his artwork. I can't. I'm, if I can't really, I'm not going to relay a story that I can't really remember where I heard it or how. But I just remember that he he kept a lot for a very long time. That ended yes. up going to the kids in one way or another. So uh, Adam love Adam loves his father's Tarzan art, uh, which I, it's funny because I never really appreciated Joe Kubrick's Tarzan art until Adam brought it up to me on, on, on how how great it was. And I got to tell you, that's that's on my short list to try and get one of his Tarzan covers because Joe did some beautiful work. His father, he, he was awesome. 
Tim mentions that he thinks the uh, apparel family has a lot of art from uh, then. Yeah, that's part that could be true. I've not heard that before, but but again, I think it's great when a lot of the collectors kind of kept it, kept the artwork, wanted their kids to have it rather than, mm -hmm. uh, than selling. If they didn't need the money, you know, well, I mean, it's your, it's their art. I, I mean, I'm, I think it's awesome. But uh, let's see here. What was the next piece? Oh, this is this is a good one. Ah, that's a beauty. So you know, since Werewolf by Night came out recently, I figured I'd take a Sam Keith cover I had laying around. Uh, and there's Werewolf by Night and Ghost Rider. Uh, Marvel Comics Presents cover. I think 107 is that what it is? Yeah, 107. Yeah. His stuff is going crazy in prices. And uh, I've had that maybe a year ago. I bought it from uh, Albert before the prices went nuts, but. Sam's great. I love his art. Uh, don't get an opportunity to buy often of it. I think this is my only cover. I have a couple pages, but yeah, that's the only one I have. And I pulled it out because uh, World of Night came out a couple weeks ago, which I thought was a great show. I hope uh, everybody enjoyed it. I have not seen it yet. So, uh, you have any Sam Keith Wolverine? Damn, dude. I wish. I wish. I uh, when when Scott and Beer got that gorgeous cover, I I, I, I shot him a couple emails. Tell him uh, I'll give him whatever he wants, and he's clearly not separating from that piece. But uh, yeah, I, I don't have any. Uh, I'm still looking, and hopefully somebody will have one once. I've seen a couple of nice pages that Glenn posted, but I think he's a little high on his price just now. Um, so we'll have to wait and see how it goes. But yeah, I'm looking. Maybe next, maybe next time we talk, I'll have one. <laughs> Tim Guerrero said, "Forget about Wolverine. Do you have any Sandman by Keith?" <laughs> Oh, no. Love the story. I read it when it first came out back in the early 90s. It was one of my favorite comics. I still have the comics, but I never... I read that book. Call me crazy, but I read that book because of the writing. I loved mm -hmm. the story. I, I, I didn't care if it was Keith or Drinchenberg, whatever, however you say his name. I just love the story. I thought, it, I thought it was so ahead of its time. Big Neil Gaiman fan. I've read a lot of his books. So... I, I didn't. I haven't bought any of the art. No, and I don't know if I ever will. To be honest with you, I just love the writing. There you go. Scott Wingo makes a smile. Says <laughs> Glenn High and Prices. Who would have guessed? Hey, Glenn. Uh, you know, Glenn has done. Uh, he's done very well uh, in, in the. I still, I still buy stuff. I still buy stuff from Glenn. Yeah. Glenn gets some. Glenn great. Gets great stuff, and if you want it, pull out your wallet, and I don't mind. It, it, you know, I, I I I love buying art, and if I like it, I'm paying for it, and. I got no wishes with 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 his prices. If I don't think if I think the price is high, I don't buy it. It's that simple. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, he does get good consignments. I mean, or great consignments, and that's because he gets high prices for them. You know, he's he's definitely uh, done done really well for himself uh, in the last three or four years. I can't uh, can't fault him for that. But um, but it's good. I mean, there's so much competition out there for people's consignments, whether it's an auction house or it's art dealers and um yeah he's he's just made a he's made a made a name for himself doing that so that's that's uh good for him uh oh and here's another good that's one that's great cover dang that's yeah john romita jr that's uh midnight suns you know the story was fun um the artwork was great i, I love the the guys that did the 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 art and the covers um i got a chance to buy this from jason probably a year or so ago, and as soon as you offered it to me, I didn't think twice. I, I love 90s art, and this is the epitome of it. I, it's great. You know, um, whether you like me or not, because of how many times the style has changed, when he when he brings it, he brings it hard. No, he does. I mean, I, I, I it's taken me a while to, to like John Romita Jr. I mean, for a while there, I was kind of always on the fence, but but I, I, you know, I get it now. Where, whereas I don't think I really appreciated it back in the '90s. But you know, looking at the stuff now, I mean, I think it's 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 amazing. And sometimes, an, you know, an inker helps. But uh, Jansen's inking on this one's really great. I mean, he's had a lot of he's worked with a lot of good inkers too. So, oh yeah, Marcus even says Jansen gritty. So, oh, and Jason <laughs> Jason says you convinced me about John Romita Jr. Maybe that had a little bit to do with it too, Jason. But uh, but no, awesome cover here, man. And it's funny. See, a lot of the pieces we're, we're talking about here are, are recent stuff. I mean, in the last six months, a year. So, um, you know, that just shows you how active you are. And, and you know, your calf gallery is not representative of you. Know, not even close. Yeah. Very, very. Uh, that's that's awesome. I think that's cool. Oh, wrong one here. Let's see. Next one is, uh, oh, well, a nice Punisher. Love this cover. 
Yeah, I love this cover. John Romita Jr.'s short run on Punisher Warzone. It was some of my favorite art back in the early 90s. Uh, I mean, with respect to what he was doing. I, I love Tex and, and all those guys. But I, I love this Punisher art. And this cover's always been one of my favorites. And uh, I was twisting Glenn's arm for months, maybe even uh, over a year. And he, he took care of me, man. I actually got to tell you, uh, we worked out something nice, him and me. So I uh, I got that cover, and it's one of my favorites. It's hanging in my living room, and it's gorgeous. Love it. Gritty, dark, mean Punisher, punching the hell out of everybody. <laughs> it's, it's a fun cover. Yeah, he doesn't need a baseball bat. And they weren't they weren't uh they weren't very helpful to uh the guys going after him either. <laughs> no. Oh man. Um let's see here. What do we got? Uh, I'm trying to look at the comments here. Uh, banger after banger. Timothy's after asking uh, uh what did he say? Uh, uh Tim, what percentage of your overall collection would you say is published on CAF? You mean how many how big i guess i think the question is how big is your collection compared to what you're sharing on calf i mean i think that's what he's asking yeah I, not even 10 percent, dude I, I have maybe 15 or 17 pieces of calf i have i have 120 hanging you know maybe more and i have hundreds of pages so it's not even it's not even a, not even 10 percent. there you go yeah, I don't think you have twenty for sure on calf. So, no. yeah, you're gonna, you, if you, we should talk movie? about a calf cribs video sometime. That would that would be pretty neat to see. I mean, yeah. not so many, sure. not too many people frame their artwork. I mean, I, no, there are a lot of guys do, but it, you know, but you seem to, you know, we're only seeing a small section of a room here. If you've got 120 frame pieces, yeah. I mean, yeah, that would be a pretty cool walk through. Yeah, give or take. Uh, any movie movie props? No, never got into movie props. I was always just a little concerned. You know, is it V1? Is there three of them? Is there seven of them? I was never really, never got on that. Never, never really got on that, uh, what boat, bandwagon, whatever health term you want to use. But I never did. Right. <laughs> I don't blame you. I've thought about movie props too, but it's those kinds of things that bother me as well. You know, was it, was it used on screen? Was it not? Um, how many are there? Same thing with like movie posters too. I mean, as much as I'd like to own a few, it's like, eh, I'd still rather have original art versus uh, certain collectibles. Yeah, um, I, I got a ton of toys. I love my toys. I got some great Negos. Let me tell you a crazy ass story. Back in 92, when that Cherkov Hurricane Andrew hit, I had a warehouse out there. I was in Miami, so I was in the middle of that crap. Talk about scary. I, um, I had all my original G.I. Joes from 82. I had all my, not in the cards, but in great shape with all the weapons. All my Star Wars. I had the damn ad that. I had so many toys in my warehouse. I'll never forget it. That damn Hurricane Andrew took everything. Took everything. It took everything. There was not a single figure in the warehouse. It was, it was one of my worst, worst memories because I was probably a toy person before I was a comic guy in a comic mm -hmm. art guy. I think my dad thought I was a little weird <laughs> because back in 19, I don't know, 80, whatever. I remember my, my mom and dad divorced when I was very young and my dad always wanted to make sure I got the right shit, you know? So I remember him coming up to me one Christmas and he goes, Hey, you had a very thick accent. Robert, what do you want for Christmas? I said, Hey dad, I really want ISIS, Batgirl and Catwoman. And he's like, what the hell is this crap? I said, they're, they're, they're figures, they're dolls. So can you imagine this old school Hispanic going, my son wants girl dolls? What the hell's the matter with this dude? So uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a toy guy way before. I'd love to show you my collection. I got hundreds of figures. You know, So um, that was tough. Hurricane Andrew was scary. I mean, I've had a bunch of hurricanes now, but I got to tell you, Hurricane Andrew was one of my scarier moments. And I could tell you some scary stories. I used to do a lot of business overseas. So one day we're sitting over beers, Bill. I'll tell you some crazy shit. But Hurricane Andrew, I'll never forget it. When that was going on, I remember going outside and it sounded like the damn hurricane was talking to me. I swear on my life, may God strike me right now. Oh shit. No, just kidding. But it sounded like the damn thing was talking to me. It was it was this it was the scariest moment of my life. All the hurricanes I've been through now, they're nothing compared to that. That was a very, very scary time. I was a kid, and that when that, when, when that hit, it was, it was I was afraid. Oh. Yeah, scarily toys, Marcus. I like to see your collection. 
<laughs> Marcus likes to collect fireworks and uh, and uh, I think some Lego as well. He's got a very diverse uh, uh, collection of things. James told me. Mar James told me Marcus likes to collect nail clipping from from uh, actors. Is that true? <laughs> oh my gosh, you can hold your own with Marcus. <laughs> oh brother, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well yeah i'm glad it wasn't in florida during during that hurricane that's for sure yeah, it's horrible. can't even imagine and and yeah so no yeah. insurance on, on your warehouse or anything is that uh, michael had asked that or... dude again i was a kid i was yeah. 18 i was a punk kid i was an idiot what did i know you know you know when you're that age you think you're invulnerable but my toys weren't <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh, calf or vintage toys. Yeah, that's, you know, I mean, uh, you never know, but uh, right now focus is only on our, but, uh, but now that's interesting. But again, that's back to your backstory. It's like, you know, which we didn't talk about earlier though. So you, so you were actually into the, into toys before you kind of got into, uh, the art side of things. So, yeah. um, that's Love tough toys. though. I, I had gotten a, I think I got a mega when I was, uh, I don't know. How old was I? Gosh. It's probably it was in the late 80s no it would have been late 80s it would have been 70s shoot i don't know 78 79 but uh but i had that i had the uh, uh six million dollar man toy and you know a few other things yeah. so but never gi joe i don't know why i mean i those were always cool and around but i never got to own any of them uh yeah, let's see okay, let's switch now here i actually kept the published image with this one for you yes double Double page flash vertical. Uh, you know, I have a couple of life field pieces. You know, uh, I'm in the same boat with everybody else with the no feet and, you know, Captain America, huge chest and all that craziness. You know, but he was one of the guys at the beginning. You know, he's, 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 so you got to appreciate for what he did when he did it. Um, so I have a couple of pieces. I got to really like them. If you go to my cast, you see a really nice cover that I have a nice double cover. And this is one of my cooler pieces of his, no feet, so it came out nice. I will tell you a great freaking life old story. And if no one believes me, I have to call my wife if she was with me. All right. So back in the early 90s, again, everything with me is in the 90s. I am, uh, at, again, Great Eastern Convention. And uh, Image had just formed, and they were all at the show, and they were doing a big, huge promotion, blah, blah, blah. It was a great time, great show. Now, if anybody's familiar with that show, whatever hotel it was, Penta, the Park Plaza, across the street, was that huge McDonald's, the four or five floor McDonald's. So my wife and I, she was my girlfriend at the time, Supergirl, we went over to a McDonald's to have some lunch, and we went downstairs all the way to the bottom. Nobody was there. We just sitting there chilling, eating our quarter pounds with cheese. All of a sudden, Liefeld gets up at the top of the stairs. He's with his girlfriend, and I see him looking down, and... He waves over, and uh, some dude comes over to him, and he's talking to him. So the guy comes down to me. It happens to be the manager. The manager goes, hey, man, you know, we're going to close this section. Can you, can, you, can you go to another spot to sit? And I said to the guy, why? Because this prick wants to sit down here by himself. I said it just like that, no lie. And he goes, well, no, you know, uh, we're supposed to clean this area, so if you guys don't mind, uh, buy you a free sandwich. You got to get out. And I was like, God, oh, man. So we're leaving, my wife and I. And as I pass up, I say to him, hey, Rob, man, you are such a prick. And he went down there and did his thing, and I kept going. Uh, that was then. That now I'm sure he's a super, super, super cool dude. And you know, if I ever saw him, I would say, "Man, you remember when you did this?" But that's that's an honest, true story. And he, uh, back in the day, he I don't think he thought his shit stank. Well, he was riding high back then. He still is. Yeah, he's a rock star. Still is. Yeah. Uh, and Andrew mentioned that uh, he gets way too much shit. That Captain America page was never published. Uh, <laughs> a life felt sympathist. Hey, man, I got a couple pieces. I like the dude. What the hell? <laughs> right. You just can't eat dinner in the same flat spot as he was uh, back in the day. Yeah. Oh, man. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what are you kidding me, dude? You, I'm not going to ask you for your graph. I don't even like you. <laughs> out. Oh, man. Well, that's. Uh, like you said, you've got lots of stories. You've been around a while. You've seen seen many things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Stanley says, hey, "Keep the stories coming." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, as uh, as the beer continues to flow, but you never know. 
Um, let's see here. What is the next star? Oh, okay. I, I remember this piece. All right. Oh, that's beauty. Dang. This is like prime. This is a bit of a sad story. All right. Yeah, this is, uh, that's. I. So a good friend of mine got this piece a couple years ago. He bought it from a one of the, one of the guys on cast. I really wasn't interested in it, but another collector who I actually was pretty good friends. We used to hang out. We used to meet out in in Boca. Real nice guy. Uh, he wanted that piece, and he was bummed that my buddy got it. Uh, you know, because. I, you know, he wanted a piece. You know, it is what it is. So I had told them that uh, I had a piece that the owner of this Namor cover wanted. And I told him I'd trade it for him and I'd get it. And, I, you know, I'd, I'd sell it to him. But it never came through back then, a year and a half ago. And uh, we kind of fell out. He wasn't too happy. I, I just bought this five or six months ago. So, hey, man, you know what I'm talking about. If you still want it, reach out to me. You know, but yeah, so... The, it, it's, it's a cool piece. I'm not a big Jay Lee fan. I mean, I, I have a Wolverine cover, uh, an X-Men classic posted, but I got this because I was trying to get it for a friend of mine. Uh, it's a great piece. It's a classic Savage Namor. You know, uh, you don't see many of those come up on the market. And you got a Doc Doom in the background, which was supposed to be uh, in the original three-issue arc. There was a couple issues before it, and they didn't use this cover. They used it for a latent cover. But, uh, yeah, that's, you know, that's it's a piece that I... I, I I got just to get for uh for this 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 one guy in particular. Wow. Well, that's too bad when when things don't work out exactly as you planned. I mean that's a yeah. great JV though. I mean that's a period where I think a lot of people that, that's their sweet spot for Jay's work for sure. So no, it's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. Maybe they're still yeah, out there. I, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I, I love I mean it's a great piece, especially for the time, you know, especially for his issue for his covers. There's one probably one of the better ones because there's a lot of you know, hastily done ones, but yeah, and yeah, you mm -hmm. know, it, it was I got it for someone, and if he reaches out to me, it's still there for trade. There you go. And yeah, Rick Welch mentions Barucci. <laughs> Barucci's a big uh, Submariner uh, fan. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know about Jay right. Lee though. I don't, you know, I don't know if that's his his what his uh, what's in his wheelhouse for uh, Submariner as far as artists go. But um, but yeah, he's a big subby subby fan for sure. Uh, oh, now somebody had mentioned Alex Ross earlier. Yeah, there you go. Nice double page Shazam uh, piece. I've had that for many years. I have a few Alex Ross pieces, uh, nothing newer, you know, older. And uh, I love this piece. I uh, I actually bought it from what the hell is this guy's name? He's a big guy. I, I forget his name. And Going back to the story of, of paying, shipping, getting it, he did not want me to, you know, sending him a check and he did not want to send it to me until it cleared. And I said to him, dude, this is it's whatever, six or seven thousand. Send me the damn art. You know, it's paid. You got the check. I had to reach out to a friend of mine who was good friends with this guy. I don't know if you guys know Adam Perlman. And Adam reached out to this dude. This guy, I wish I remember his name, All Star Collectibles, maybe. He, he, I think he sold a couple Superman ones in the day. He's, he's he's pretty big guy. That, and, uh, you know, yeah. Adam went to uh, that was all. Wasn't that Joe and Nadia Manorino? Or maybe mm, no, 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 no. It's not that. Maybe they didn't have the wrong name. Uh, okay. Uh, I didn't remember. Shit. Sorry, man. I should have been prepared. That's okay. But anyway, he wanted to hold my check for like ten or twenty days, and I hate that. You ask anybody I work with, I can get hit by a bus tomorrow. I want my art right away. I pay for next day here. I want my stuff now. I, I don't want to wait. Because you know you don't know what can happen, and right, uh, right. so I, I, yeah, so Adam reached out to him and said, "Look, the guy good, send him his shit," and he sent it. So I have it hanging uh, next to another Alex Ross I have with Aquaman and Flash, a couple of Batman's. It's 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 one of my favorite pieces. Well, I mean, and how, you've had it for a while. If you can say you bought it for six to seven thousand dollars, so. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's true though. I mean, I was, yeah. you know, I remember looking at Alex's work back when I first started collecting and thinking I'd love to own one and just, you know, think, you know, realizing how out of uh touch it, you know, out of price range I could not afford it, but but yeah, I mean, pieces like this were, you know, in the, in the early 2000s around 6-7,000. I mean, that was that was the going rate. I mean, is so so yeah, I mean, be thankful. This this is a great image. And I mean, I'm gosh, yeah. it's awesome. Yes. Just like the Marvels. Yeah, I was at a, yeah it's uh, it's funny. I um you know, I, I people always say, Why are you so open about you know what you pay for something? It's this simple, it doesn't matter what I pay. 
you know, because when I decide to sell it, that price is regardless irrelevant. It's not important. So I, right. I don't mind, you know, when, when something comes up and I, and I bring up a number, you're not going to get it for that price. It's just at the time, that's what it went for. Um, it's funny because I have a great Alex Ross story. Well, not really a great one, but it just shows you how the times have changed. He was at one of the shows. It wasn't, it was another big show in New York, but in New York state and nobody was at his table and he had all his marbles art out and he was selling them for like two and 300 bucks the pages. And I'll never forget. My brother loved it. And he would sit there and chill, chill with them and they would have lunch together and they talked the whole weekend and he sold hardly anything. And now you can't touch his art. No, no, not at all. I mean, never pretty much after Sal started repping him, I mean, ever all, you know, and doing the right thing. I mean, made it, made him out to, you know, be a fine artist to really kind of open. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was one of those artists that really kind of cross, cross that uh, plateau early on mm -hmm. as far as somebody who transitioned from comic artist to somebody who was popular in the mainstream, you know, where fine art, art, fine art collectors were looking at his work. And I mean, I thought that was cool. I mean, he, he was, at, you know, right, right there. I mean, uh, and getting people to recognize them. And, 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 you know, that's like, think about it before Jim Lee's covers were going for astronomical, crazy prices. Uh, uh, Alex Ross was getting, you know, great prices on his artwork that everybody just thought was crazy. And, you know, he, he'd go into San Diego or New York with those great big booth setups and, uh, but it worked, right. You made yeah. it, you, you presented yep. the, when you present the artwork like it should be, it fetches the right, it fetches higher prices. So, I mean, I, Kudos to to him and to Sal for just doing that and presenting everything that way. Because I mean, he, he was really one of the first. So I mean, this, this is, is yeah, uh, how long have you owned this piece? I'm just curious. Did you pick this up? Uh, I've owned uh, for... uh, maybe four or five years ago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Nothing four or five years ago. That. I mean, look, let's be realistic. Prices didn't really start going crazy until the last maybe three years. Two years, three years. Yeah. No. True. Uh, Rich Thrill says he uh, he hates when he gets asked about uh, what he paid for a piece. I mean, I know it doesn't doesn't matter at all. And I and I, you know, I always hear the stories collectors. I mean, I know they're they can't they go to somebody and they say, you know, I know you paid this for it two, two years ago, so I'll give you uh, you know just a little bit more. And that you know, it's just crazy when uh, when that yeah. happens. But I know a lot of that happens a lot. And I don't and I can't believe that there's that many collectors who are you know naive in in their approach to. Um, Mm -hmm. to negotiating you know by bringing up what somebody paid for something uh you know if you it doesn't bother me at all back. no yeah no it doesn't bother me because again you're not going to get it for what i paid and you're not going to get it for 20 percent what i paid you're not going to get it for 50 percent what i paid you're not going to get it maybe so i it, that never ever bothers me i've never you know uh i bought art for you know a couple thousand dollars and somebody knows it and then six years later i'll sell it for 15 or 20. it doesn't matter dude because that's what it's worth now so i uh i can appreciate what he said but it doesn't bother me there you go uh <laughs> i have a lot into it standard dealer answer that's very true yeah. marcus we hear we hear that on yeah. uh dueling dealers I mean, we hear that everywhere right i have a lot well we all i mean even even collectors i mean that's the standard uh, you know when you don't want to say what you have into something, you just say, I have a lot into it. Cause it, it puts the other guy at a disadvantage immediately. And yeah. so, <laughs> yeah, it's just the way it goes. Yeah. It's, yeah. It does. I mean, again, I, you know, it's what, well, you know, I've made bad deals because of it. I've made great deals because of it. I, I don't, I'm the guy that, you know, could have, should have, would have, it's done. It's past next. Yep. I, uh, I agree. I definitely agree. Uh, let's Something see. Oh, here you go. Oh, that's a beauty. Now, if some guy just reaches out to me and says, hey, man, what'd you pay for that piece? I'm not going to tell him. But if I'm working with somebody or I'm talking, I'm telling the story. Oh, a great piece. Yeah, man, I bought it five years ago for this. I don't really care. That's uh, I love Capullo right. McFarlane. I love Capullo McFarlane. You know, 90s, I thought they were a great combination. I know, you know, Williams Lee, you know, everybody loves Jim Lee Scott Williams. They worked so many years together. But I think just something you know they were awesome together and uh i own quite a few of his covers this is one of my favorites uh it came out on halloween of 98 or 97 and it's just really cool with the pumpkins and the stupid cats and the owl uh i love the cover it's one of my favorites and it's funny because you know it said on the side hey man add todd's name because obviously he did the inking and mm -hmm. uh most of the time when i buy a piece of capullo art 
I'll buy it direct from his wife and, and him because they're really great to do business with. They're expensive. They know what their stuff is worth. But, you know, I, I like the provenance of, hey, yeah, Capullo and McFarland did this page. I have a bunch of double page flashes. And I, I you know, when I, before I buy them, I always ask her, hey, you know, who, 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 who's inks are on this? And, and she'll tell me, these are Mickey. These are uh, McFarland's. And, you know, I, I, I like dealing with them because they're good, good people. Well, this is a great one. I mean, you know, Capullo's stuff is, uh, I mean, he's, his, his work's been going through the, the roof, you know, deservedly. Yes. So it's just, a, just absolutely amazing. Yeah. Th and this is an awesome piece. Yeah, yeah, really. And I'll tell you, I, I'm, uh, you know, talking about numbers and stuff, I think, you know, spawn, early spawn, mid spawn, McFarlane Capullo, I, I think that's just going to keep going up. Uh, you know, it's 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 getting harder to get his art, and you know, look at some of the auctions; they're getting great prices for their stuff. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, I mean, that's that's pretty darn incredible, man. Um, and you have a few spawn covers, right? I, I assume I got four behind me. I got two in my portfolios, and I got uh, probably four or five double page flashes. I think I have one posted. I think I have a really cool. Yeah, I have a really cool charmer posted in my cast. But I have a beautiful Angela double page flash. Do I have it? Uh, yeah, I have it in my, but I'm not going to go get it. But yeah, I have a real nice uh, double page flash, Angela. I, I I think I posted it in one of the chat rooms in CGC when they were saying, hey, show your double page flash. I think I posted it in there. But yeah, oh, uh, I, I, I love their art. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. That's from uh, Spawn 47, the DPS. Wow, that is incredible. Yeah, isn't that cool? <laughs> That's uh, McFarlane Mix. That is awesome. Yeah, like you said, it. no Wolverine here, but still pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's still pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Oh, man. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, here you go. Nice. Uh, this is uh, Jurgens, right? Yep. Jurgens and Breeding. He's, he's, I, for me, he's, I know the 80s, Jim. Uh, well, I, I'm not even going to tell you who, who did it. Superman in those days because I don't even know. But for me, the 90s, Dan Jurgens, when he drew and, 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 and wrote, Superman, I thought it was great. You know, I used to order my, my, my brother and I would call him the duds. You order two and three copies. But Superman, I'd order 10, 15, 20 copies because people were reading the book. And I think I think Dan Jurgens does gorgeous, gorgeous work, you know, especially in the early 90s. Uh, you know, and, and look, classic villain, Bizarro and uh Lex. I love the Superman cover. Yeah, no, this is awesome. I agree. I mean, I think Jurgens. Jurgens was just amazing. I mean, I, uh, you know, as a writer and an artist, and yeah, this is this is a fantastic image. Shoot, now is this a recent no, pickup a... too? Like many of the other ones? No, I got this a couple years ago. Um, did I trade for it or did I buy it? I don't remember actually. Um, I got this a couple years ago, and uh, I when I saw it, it's funny. It was you know what? When I bought it, it was right after the auction that. Uh, what the hell's those guys over there? Not Heritage, the other one. Forgive my brain. Comic um, Link? Yeah, Comic Link. When their Bizarro, uh, Bizarro Returns cover sold, this came out right after privately. I found the dude that had it, and I said, I'll take it. How much you want? Uh, but I think it was partial trade, partial uh, cash. I uh, Inks, uh, I want to say Brett Breeding, uh, CJ was asking. I think it's Brett Breeding. It's on there. Jurgens and breeding. Uh, yeah, breeding. Yep. Yeah, no, it is slick. Stanley, Stanley was curious if you not, had it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, sorry, man. I don't mean to be ahead of you. Apologize. No, for, no uh, sorry. Stanley, I, I'm not a. Uh, I've had Kirby. I've had um, never did go. I've had some nice Gene Colon, Daredevil, but I've never really been a fan. I apologize. I know how they're the classics and they're, they're the ones that started it. And I'm ignorant to their art, but I just have never really, I've never been a, I hate to say I've never been a fan, but I just have never, never really been into buying it. The only guy I like in, you know, that's older, um, John Buscema. I love John Buscema's art. I love his art. One of my favorite covers of all time is the Thor Silver Surfer cover. Uh, Thor 4 or Silver Surfer 4, whatever the hell it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I love you see Mazar, but I've never been a Kirby guy. I've never been a Gil Kane, Ditko. I know it's it's nineties ignorance, but uh I just never been a fan. I apologize, dude. 
there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we're all, you know, kind of creatures of, uh, you know, the books that we, we grew up on, right? At the end of the day. I mean. Yeah, exactly. Uh, That's what I say. Yeah, I mean, I I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's guys like you that are driving up the the '90s prices because that's that's where everything's at these days. I mean, the, anything that came out in the '90s is is what's hot right now. I mean, it's it's fun, unobtainable. Yeah, no, it's a I sweet love spot. the '90s art. I've been I've been buying it forever, and I remember talking to people 10, 15 years ago, and I was buying everything I could '90s, and they'd be like, "Why do you buy that dreck? Why do you buy that crap?" I was like, "Dude, you know, hey man, that's when I grew up. That's what, that's the stuff I like." Uh, see now we got the second bot in here. <laughs> so, all right, we got two tonight. Two, only two. Let's try to keep it there. So yeah, it's uh, the bots are back. Uh, let's see here. Oh, okay. This is oh. a good one. <laughs> and I, I turned uh, this one on its side, man. I, I hate I hated to do it, but it would it was I couldn't see any of the detail when it was vertical. I was like, all right, I got to turn it sideways. But it's just as good to look at it this way. I think I posted this briefly on Kath and then I took it down. So uh, I know some of the guys out there that I speak with know I bought the whole book of Wolverine 90 a year and a half ago. And um, from when I was young, it was my favorite art book. Uh, I just love the action of Wolverine versus Sabretooth. I love that it was double, triple, and quadruple page flashes. Um, I think it was <laughs> claim. No way, brother. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I think, uh, you know, it's funny because I sent you a couple of pics and I probably, I bet you don't have them to post, but, uh, a couple of his peers, Ryan Otley and Mike Diodato refer to this book as, as, as some of the best action art. Oh, look at you, you badass. I did, I did. <laughs> I did it while we were talking too during the show, believe it or not, because I forgot. James, and I was like, oh shoot, I got James do this. says I couldn't James says I couldn't count on you. There you go, James. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Look at him. <laughs> yeah. So I bought the whole book and uh it was it was a big experience for me because I've loved that book forever and I've been bothering before he was even uh with uh, Jason at a sequential. I was bothering Adam to just buy a piece, let alone the whole book. And he he loved that book. He's had it forever. He had to buy the pages back from the two anchors, uh, Farmer and Green, because you know how they split the book. And um, he, he he had to get them back, and he's had them all this time. And the unique thing that we did with this book, I bought, like I said, I bought the entire book, and it was on the prem. Uh, the, the the premise was that it had to be. Now, I'm going to talk about something that I don't even understand, so don't ask me any questions. He wanted the whole book to be nft And I said to him, I want the original art. I don't give a crap of what else you do. So what he did, and, and we think it's probably the first NFT book, he did digital color copy or digital colors on each piece. There's 13 pieces to the whole book. And he had it done digitally new. Uh, and he has the NFT attached to the original art and to the colored piece. So if I ever want to sell a, a page, I sell the NFT with the original art and the colored, the digitally, the new digitally colored piece. It's only one of one. Uh, it's a pretty cool idea. It's unique. You know, uh, they kept harping on the provenance, and I'm old school. If I'm buying it from the artist, I don't need the provenance. But I do appreciate the idea that I think it's the first NFT full book. And, you know, you you have the the, 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 the NFT connected with the original art, connected to the digital colored piece, which is which is nice. Um, I don't know. I, I, I thought it gave it a, a special, unique uh, twist. Right. Yeah. I mean, they use NFTs in that way to um to establish the provenance like but like you said it's already there because you're buying it direct from the artist technically but but it also is a it's like a binding contract the kind of things that like barry windsor smith tried to do where you know he would get 10 percent in sales if somebody sold his artwork later but it was hard to enforce it but with nfts that's something that uh you know i i, I guess it, you know should it should allow that to happen so you know where the artist would get a residual on uh, on any future sales because it's essentially binding a contract with the art and you get the digital uh, color piece too. But yeah, um, I mean, I guess yeah. that's cool. I, well, you know, I, I do believe, and I've said this 
many times in the past that I, I do think that at some point in time in our hobby that NFTs or some form of digital tracking will become a part of uh, most collectibles just because, uh, you know, it's, a, it's it's the way to establish provenance and it kind of carries with that item when you, you know, throughout its history. And kids, kids, kids today are all digital, right? So when they're the collectors yeah. of tomorrow and they're our age, they're going to expect some kind of uh, digital tracking, a way to way to establish provenance. So I, I think that it's as weird as, as it is for us all today. I do think it's going to play an important part in the hobby somewhere in the future. Maybe not our future, but uh, but it's you know it, it, it's what is our biggest question when we're buying something? Is it is it is it a real, not a fake? You know. Who did you? Yeah. Who did you buy it from? A lot of people want to know that, so they want to know a chain of ownership. Well, well, if you have it, if an NFT is associated with your artwork, uh, you will know the chain of ownership on something, and that's that's important sometimes. So, and, and this, uh, this image, wow. this is one of the two four or quadruple page flashes. That is four eleven by seventeen together. The art is massive and huge, and it's just. It's amazing. His freaking head is as big as mine, and my head is huge. Uh, it, it's it's just a gorgeous <laughs> piece. It's the pen and inks are incredible. It, it's just one of my favorite books, and to see that you know his peers also talk about it and loved it. It's just a you know it, it's just something that I don't see me selling anytime soon. You know, uh, people have asked me, "You're going to sell them pieces? You're going to sell them uh, together?" Um, you know, I don't I don't think about it, and and um. I love the whole book. And James, if you were here earlier, you would have seen that I have them all framed because I started the show with that. So next time, stop eating so much and doing push-ups and start from the beginning. <laughs> you know James too well. But uh, but yeah, yeah, let me, I can highlight those those comments again, though. Diodato and Otley and Liefeld all uh, were huge fans of uh, of Wolverine 90. So yeah, it makes, it makes yeah. perfect sense. I mean, he was on yes. fire back then. Yeah, he still is. He's still the uh, you know he's still uh, one of the uh, one of the Wolverine artists. You know he's uh, he's uh, and, and Rich. I am not an NFT guy, and like I said, I can care less. I wanted the original yep. art in my hands. So NFT schmenft, whatever the hell that saying is. Uh, whatever it, I, 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 you know, um, you didn't care, right? It's like you yeah, just want I, you I, just I want to get it. Well, oh, I mean, but wait, so... let me tell you about all the stuff we're doing. I'm like, okay, cool. I want the art. Yep. No, I get it. I mean, and but it, you know, as, as fate would have it, I mean, you know, because they were talking a lot about NFTs at that time, that's what helped get it out, right? Sure. Or he still might own it. Sure. So it's, uh, I mean, so you had you kind of picked the right time to to go after it. So you know, lucky you, because I, I do think that they kind of put everything else on, put it off to the side for a while while there were all those legal issues yeah. going on with uh, Disney and uh, Warner and everybody. So, and we still really haven't seen any of the, uh, the reps kind of go out and approach NFTs again. So uh, yeah, again, it's going to happen one way or another, some form of NFT will be it's out the future, there. man. It is. Cause you can't just handle when you buy a piece of artwork. I mean, I don't think to ask who was the original owner, you know, when I buy something from Berkeley no. or whomever, you know, but, uh, but in a weird way, it is kind of good to know. Cause some people ask that, right? Like, who did you buy it from? And I'll be like, well, I got it from this guy. You know, well, who did he get it from? Do you know if he got it from the artist? Especially when you buy a commission or a convention sketch, they're like, well, who was the person that com you know commissioned it? I'm like, I don't know. I bought it secondhand. I mean, people, some people really want to know that, uh, you know, that owner chain of ownership type of thing. Uh, so yeah, I'll tell you, um, the, I can understand if you're talking about art from the 60s where you got a lot of issues, you know, what was done, what wasn't done, who added what, who did not mm -hmm. what. But that's, I, I think I'm going to talk about the decade I know. 90s up, we really don't – I don't think there's a question on who did what and how it was done, right? I think there's a little bit more follow-through. So, I, I mean, I don't think it's really relevant. I understand, you know, in the 60s you get some Jack Kirby page or cover or whatever the hell, you know, hey, who did it? Was it this inker? Was it that inker? You know, uh, I don't think we have those issues 90s up, in my opinion. Well, at least on published artwork, generally. I mean, it's a, right. most oh, people. Are, right. You know, Probably. if somebody's gonna somebody's gonna forge a piece of artwork, they're typically gonna forge, you know, a convention, a convention sketch, commission, those sorts of things. I mean, there was a story about uh, some artist who was drawing, you know, Liefeld and Jim Lee and Silvestri stuff at cons until the, the three of them kind of got together and kind of got this guy kicked out because he was literally signing their name to it. I think I've actually. See, I haven't unpacked enough. I'd love to get him. I got a couple pieces from uh, from Mike. I I was over at his house doing a bin dive one day, and I held up these two 
McFarland sketches. And I'm like, look at the shit, dude. You've had these ha- sitting in a bin for forever. You know, I mean, I had to blow the dust off of them. And he's like, oh, there they are. Those are those two fakes I bought from uh, blah, blah. You know, he, he named the uh, the person who, who he bought them from. And he's like, throw those things out. I don't want them. And I'm like, I'm keeping them. I'm going to, I'll burn them on a show one day. I'll do something with them. But the story around them was that there was, there was an artist who, who would go to shows and just bring like a portfolio full of sketches he had pre-done and sign Liefeld's name or McFarland's name or, you know, or Jim Lee to him. And uh, so that, so that's the yeah. kind of crap that's out there really is our pieces like that um, from artists during that era. And so, you know, so it's, so that kind of stuff is definitely problematic. We see it on eBay all the time, right? People, uh, people from, yeah, and countries. they got a, it's amazing how they don't clamp down on it. I mean, I don't know, I guess, how would you do it? But it's, yeah, that's, I, uh, there's a lot of, chicaner going on with a lot of the fakes out there i agree with you it's bullshit yeah ebay's ebay's still a problem i mean i i used to report them and they'd still never do anything so i just i gave up after a while it just didn't yeah. didn't matter um so, so we got two more pieces of art to look at and i know that uh this next one's going to make you know wolverine fans very happy to see right a gorgeous freaking double i did darken it this one a little bit just so you know on on the the bigger image i darkened it a hair just so we could see the detail a little better but um, I hope you don't mind because so the left image is not. Like that, it's, like. it's it's so the 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 double cover was done in pencils, uh, no inks. And um, I had asked Adam, I said, hey, dude, why in the hell did you not put inks on it? You know, my ignorance, I said to him, did the uh, Hildebrand brothers tell you they wanted it in pencil? Because that's what they wanted to, you know, uh, he gives them the copy and they paint over it. And he said, uh, no, man, it was me. I wanted the details. Not to get lost. I wanted none of my inkers to ink it. I wanted it to be all me in pencils to keep the detail. And I was like, oh, shit, that's pretty cool. And uh, this cover, it's just so awesome. I love it. You know, I, I'm a pen and ink guy, but this this cover, I, I love in pencils. And I wish you could see it live because just the detail is incredible. And it's been published a couple times. They've even done it. Uh, they've even digitally colored it. Like I have the Hunt for Wolverine number one. Can I show this? Yeah, let me uh, switch us around here. Oh, we can do it later. You can leave that up. Yeah. Oh, so no, the no, Hunt for Wolverine num- yeah, the Hunt for Wolverine number one, they 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 did a a variant cover with the you know with the original pencils, and they also recolored it. I don't have that one. They also recolored the uh, the the Wolverine nine cover for Hunt for Wolverine number one. So they've done mm-hmm. it a few times. I think on a, on a other a couple other um, uh, graphic novels and stuff. But you know, again. The guys that don't like 90s art, I, I say to you, you look at this gorgeous piece and I mean, I don't know. I guess you could find things to knock it, but I, I don't. I think it's just beautiful. The detail is gorgeous. And uh, when Adam told me that story, it really clarified for me a lot because I honestly thought that they didn't do inks because Brothers Hildebrand said, no, man, we want to go over a copy with no inks. And he said it was not them at all. I insisted that no inks go on it because I wanted my details to show. I was like, sweet. Wow. No, and by the way, he's such a cool dude, Adam. You, I mean, if you could ever get him on your show, the guy is so nice. Whenever I see him at a show, I see him drawing for the kids for free. You know, uh, whenever I've done pick up art from him, I go to him direct because he's up north. And he, 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 you know, he, he entertains. He shows me art. He is such a super cool dude. His fame has not come to him at all. He is, he's a rock star. And, you know, he, he, he's such a nice guy. A nice, nice guy. Yeah, uh, Gectex says uh, even Dynamic Forces made a lithograph of uh, this one. But uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's, oh, it's brilliant. By the way, you got a you got some dude on your site that that, that claims to have the original, and uh, I I've emailed him a hundred times saying, "Hey man, you know, stop the fakery because I got the original," and he's never answered me back. And I even hmm. brought it up to Adam, and he and, and Adam said, "No, man, I've never ever sold any of these. They're always been together." I think I sent you the, the link, but you got a guy out there that says it's he has the original. And Maybe that's I missed probably it. Was that... I haven't posted it. Yeah. But did you send that to me when you sent me the art? I guess maybe I yeah, missed yeah, that. Yeah, I did. I probably didn't read it. I hate to say it. I probably just went in and saved the art and then didn't and skipped over reading uh-huh. what you wrote me. I'll, I'll go through it. I but yeah, well, but that's just it. You know, people buy fakes, you know, if it is a fake. I mean, you know, you never want to say anything uh, without, you know, but, but that happens, right? I mean, it, it's happened on CAF. <laughs> You know, 
enough times over the years where somebody ends up finding that they got you know a fake or an artist made more than one drawing of something i mean one of the first commissions i ever bought on ebay from an artist was like a recreation to the cover to x-men 101 right i just thought it was awesome and mm -hmm. then like a year later the same artist did the exact same freaking commission and i was pissed you know i mean and sold it on ebay i'm like what the hell are you doing i mean you, i mean now somebody else has got one so i mean I, you know as soon as i saw that i'm like i'm selling it and i don't mean to i'm not diminishing yours but you know what i mean that that kind of stuff you know kind of it happens I'm with you. and uh, i i used to own the cover to ghost rider 15 i bought it years ago and then i started seeing it pop up all over the place to read the, the read the redone covers and i was like, right, like i don't want it anymore and i sold it yeah, but Marcus was asking about painted and digital. So, Marcus, the Hildebrand brothers back in, you know, 95, they painted the cover. It's nice. You can see there's differences, you know, subtle differences from the paint and the pencils. Mm. But since then, it's been published a few times, and it's all digital. Uh, the Hunt for Wolverine number one, one of the variants were the digitally painted uh, Wolverine 90 cover. It's actually pretty cool looking. Well. That's, I'm the uh, Joker that uses <laughs> freaking Andrew G. The wise ass. <laughs> I use it. As <laughs> Good one. I like uh, this guy. Man. I want to have a beer with him. Andrew G. Uh, yep. All right. Well, I'm going to go back to your email and I'll check it out too. I mean, what? It, nah, it, nah, those I, are always those are always tough, tough things to look at too or bring up because you just never know, right? But if you've emailed them nah, too I, and they've never gotten back to you, that I don't know. As yeah. you hate when you hate when a collector maybe gets duped by something, you know, at all. You know, it's it's uh, it's never a fun situation. Um, but you no, bought. I it. didn't bring it up to. Yeah, I didn't bring it up to to tell you to go. You know, uh, to to you know to. No, no, but I'm always I'm curious too. I like I you know I mean I I like to know what's on there. I, I you know I don't act on things unless there's problems. You know, at the end of the day, so I don't uh, try to. I try to be very even keeled with how I manage calf and, and things like that, that, that come up. Cause you know, how can, I can't mm. accuse, I mean, I, I don't know where he bought it from. You know, it's like, I can't, I can't really get involved in, uh, in something like that, but I'm always curious anyway. Um, he, it's, it, he, that's one of his best selling prints. So I'm sure it's just a print that he bought and he framed it. Ah, I see what you're saying. So maybe, yeah, I, yeah. Well, that always gets me too. When, when, uh, people post prints but may you know make it seem like it's an original um yeah. yeah well i try to i try to weed those people out as best i can you know when they do that but uh, it's not always easy uh, Billy, that's an awesome Marcus. site man don't worry about it everything is awesome we love it there you go marcus says you know regarding that one it was a little before the time with uh digital colors so okay yeah that's that's very true pitchforks and torches says cj no we don't do that um all right well we're down to the the last piece so uh, let's take a look at that one and i oh, love man. this piece <laughs> this thing is gorgeous so another, I, I, yeah. I posted this uh, for just a few or maybe a week or two on calf and i pulled it down because yeah, i wanted to one day post the whole book this is amazing it's four pages it's huge it it's i mean i there's nothing i can say it's just so gorgeous i framed this also and it's uh by far, for me, after the cover, my favorite piece of the book. Gosh, I mean, it's the detail on this thing is is incredible. I mean, yeah. holy crap. Wow, yeah, I it's mean, again, four pages. <laughs> I can't. So yeah. So this one's framed just like the other one. I mean, I, yeah. Well, we've you've got to give me a tour of the place sometime, Rob. This, this is yeah, uh, when you're down here. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's a, again a huge quadruple page splash. It's it's monstrous, all eleven by seventeens. It's just uh, it's amazing, and it's I love it. It's um, one of my favorite pieces in my uh, in my entire home that I have framed. <laughs> Jason says he's looking on uh, Frontier Airlines right now to find a cheap flight to to check out this one in person. Uh, when you're down, brother, I'll we'll go hang out. We'll have a few beers. We'll have some steaks whenever you're ready, man. Oh my gosh! I mean, and th th these were so. That was just such a cool thing, right? I mean, the uh, the four four pages basically. Uh, it's just crazy. I mean, the '90s were full of interesting things, but I mean, this was one that was just so so fitting 
for uh for adam's talents on this one so yeah and it's cool that it like you you had mentioned before when you started this you you, you said that uh, adam loved this book so much that he went back to farmer and green and, and picked up all the pages i mean he wanted to keep keep the book together he felt that strongly about it um, i mean yeah. it's such a such a milestone th uh, artwork for him so um wow Sorry, I'm just I'm still gawking at it, but uh, it's it's incredible. <laughs> four, a four place says Rich. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. Uh, it's it's right. like I said, it's you, you can't appreciate its size until you see it. It's just amazing. Uh, I have next to it uh, a Mark Bagley six covers, and then I have the uh, the the Kyle Holtz five covers, and this thing is almost as big, almost as big. Well, you, you gotta turn, just, turn, turn before we yeah, leave. I'm you gotta turn that laptop one more time because we saw it at the beginning, yeah. but I don't think we all realized yeah, what we were looking at. Here, let yeah, me, forgive uh, me for. Okay, hold on. See if I can do this. So, you got there's the huge Kyle Holtz. You know the uh, that's the oh, yeah. um, that's uh, like it was an homage to X Men One. How do it set up? That's the. That's the uh, the Bagley six, and then that's some of the pieces from Wolverine ninety. Wow. I don't know if I'm doing a good job. Probably not doing a good job of it. No, no, it's 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 fine. But this is why we got to get a calf cribs video. But yeah, that that right there, those five artworks together is that that's unbelievable. Yeah, and those are the big ones on top. Um, but I guess. Oh shoot! We featured that one page. That, you know, I love that that uh, page that was um, to the. I mean, it, it was the one that kind of comes kind of swooping down with the with the broken panels through it. Because um, we featured oh, that yeah. on the cap update. Yeah, the one that's to I the did. right of the monitor. That thing that was stunning. Yeah. Shoot. That's a triple page splash. That's awesome. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. One day we can do a cribs if you want. Oh shit! Who's that ugly fucker? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when you sent yeah, me that first that. picture of you, I was like, "You look too scary in that picture. You got to give me a, you got to give me something <laughs> a little different." Yeah, I think you didn't like that one. Um, <laughs> but yeah, did. it's uh, it's the, I think those are the eighteen pieces, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, that was all eighteen, and we made it in just awesome. under, uh, just a little over two hours. It turns out. Yeah, I hope that was. Uh, I always, I always think of the one of the best movies ever made, Gladiator, and I, you know, I always want to make sure if I say. Are you not entertained? I hope everybody <laughs> says yes. If not, well, tune out. Marcus wanted, wants to know where you hang the Nina <laughs> photo. I don't think Nina has a place on the wall, Marcus. Nina's not on the wall. Nina's, Nina is a, is a, is a, a wall. Is that, I made that is mistake that better? already. Ay, ay, ay. Look at that. I, I, you gotta look. I mean, I'm blushing watching that. So... <laughs> So Rob, this has been this has been uh, terribly fun. I have to tell you, man. I'm so glad. Uh, you know, I, when I reached out to you, I kind of thought like, oh, Rob's, you know, that you know, Wolfie fans going to turn me down. I'm not going to get him because you know, I I just had a feeling that it, you know you were more a private person, and so you wouldn't want to chat. But I'm so glad you did, man. I think that uh, especially since you've been been in the hobby for as long as you have, I, you know, I, I think anybody who was who was smart enough to be collecting in the early '90s really has. He has something on a lot of us. I mean, because I, you know, I'm a little older than you. I didn't, I didn't buy my first piece of art until like '99. It just didn't occur to me, right? I, I'm always envious and uh, amazed that people who were, your, you know, you were in your teens when you picked up your first piece of original yeah. art. It's just incredible. And yeah, I um, great memories. I, uh, you know, we always want to go back to a certain time in our life and. The, the the nostalgia of the 90s it, it, you know I, I love it it was such a big time it was I really think it's I think one day when we look back in history all you guys can call me an idiot I don't care I've been called worse but I think when we go back in time and we look at history the 90s had a big influence on the merchandising of what came I know it's silly all the gimmick coverage but it brought people in when Superman freaking died and it was on the USA Today paper and it was on CNN, it brought people in. So I really believe that the 90s will be a decade that will be looked at as that it really grew the, uh, you know, the, the pop culture of it. I mean, I, I really believe it helped with the comic movies. I mean, I, I don't know. I, 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 this is my opinion. 
So yeah, Andrew G was asking. I mean, it, we covered a little bit of that uh, earlier, Andrew. Just different uh, cons that uh, that Rob gets out to. So he's always at MegaCon. Yeah, not to a couple. I'm yeah. always at MegaCon because it's. And we're not trying to convince him to go to Heroes moment. next year, right? Heroes next year could and, be a maybe, right, Rob? Yeah, definitely. I almost went this time. Uh, I just had a prior commitment. Uh, James Gibbs, get your fat ass up here, and I was like, okay, okay, but. I had some things I had to do. Uh, I really wanted to because I wanted to see the whole crew and talk some shit and drink some beers. And I got so much more stuff to many more stories that'll that are uh, that'll be funny as hell. And I, you can see I love talking. I love telling stories. It, yeah, it, it, that's me in a nutshell. Well, I hope you can make it because that's kind of like the uh, the show that we're always going to you know rally around. I think is heroes, no matter you know where where anybody was from. So many people flew out from the West Coast, uh, you know, came down from New York, and just you know, it's it's a show, you know, that you, you got to go to. So I hope you do. I've already set the date on my calendar, so I, I don't forget about it. Cool. Um, but yeah, well, Rob, again, thank you, man. This is a lot of fun. I'm glad we we got to meet your daughters tonight. They tuned in. They wanted to see what was up. Make sure yeah. you were, you didn't you didn't embarrass the family. So, and I don't think yeah, you did. They want. Yeah. Hopefully, they uh, weren't around for the Nina pick. <laughs> well, you never know. They might they might nah. hit you up. With uh, some I'm, later. I'm very open with my kids. They know how nutty their dad is. There's the I don't pull punches with them. I love my daughters. That's, oh, there you uh, go. Yeah. She's still you're still awake. Ah, oh, she's so sweet, my Alana. <laughs> <laughs> she's, yeah she's high-fiving you all right everybody well, that this wasn't, has been a that lot wasn't of fun. me in the hold on wait bill that, just tell my daughter. that wasn't me in that pick with nina harley that was some stranger sorry sweetie <laughs> somebody you didn't know right <laughs> um anyway but listen man uh you know this was this is fun and i, I hope we get to I, definitely i'll tell you if i'm ever heading down that way i i, I will hit you up before i before i head out because i'd love to be able to check out everything in person i mean it's a very enviable collection and, and I, I like the fact that you like to, to, to show it off too yes, do. and and bill i'm going to be absolutely clear with you i am not a bullshitter if i tell you you're in the area and want to come by you can call me the same damn day i have my own business i come and go you can come by anytime you give me a call and i'll, I'll show you a great time for sure okay i, I don't bullshit like that honestly all right man I, i'm gonna hold you to that too uh, all right, everybody. We're gonna sign off for the night. Uh, Rob, you got to tell me that one story. So don't don't I'm, click leave I'm studio say, until we're done. And like all right, I said, everybody. Uh, anybody that wants to know who that guy is, you can email me, and I'll tell you. It's gonna strangle him. All right, everybody. Have a great night, and uh, I'll be back tomorrow uh, with Anthony, Sharon, and uh, Mr. Berkey to for our final Halloween show tomorrow night. It's we filmed a whole bunch of new memes and skits for you guys, just special for tomorrow night. I think you'll enjoy it, but uh, we'll see you then.